eight fifty five four fifty free. You can also join us via Skype. The Skype username to get you on the show is lrn.fm. So feel free to reach out in that way if you prefer. You know, Mark, uh, you and I, we've been out of school, the government school system for, I've been out for well over, you know, 10, 15 years. You've been out for 20 plus uh, at this point. I had a little extra time in prison, though. And uh, so, you know, back in the day, you might recall, maybe it was like this for you, but they would have these fire drills where, you know, you'd they'd put the fire alarm on and everybody kind of knew it was going to happen at some point during the day. And, you know, you'd file out of the classroom and go across the field or something like that to get away from the building where it could be on fire. And they'd stand you out there for a little while. And after a few minutes, they'd call the bell off or whatever, and they'd let you back into class. Is that think, what it was like for you? I think most of the drills were sort of unannounced um, in oh, my really? experience. But I, I guess, you know, maybe when I was quite young, I thought, um, well, there could be a fire. But after enough drills, mm. you're uh, of the opinion that uh, you should just ignore things and, and get, you know, just, just go on about your business Weird. best you can. Maybe I'm misremembering, but I could have sworn that kind of the word was put out there that, hey, at some point during the day, there's going to be this uh, this fire drill that happened. Well, I went to a private school, oh. and so it, it, perhaps they didn't have, uh, you know, an obligation to you, tell, or just didn't have a system for. You did go to a government school though, towards the high school and yeah. things, right? They didn't have the drills then, or they were just random. I'm sure they did. Uh, it was too high I to just ca- could care so less about <laughs> <laughs> government school at that point. I I do school generally. So that was my memory of what it was like. And then you know every now and then, I mean, I don't even bar- I barely most of the ones I remember are the fire drills where you would have to leave the class. Um, they also had the kind of drill where they would you had to get under your desks because for some reason that would prepare you or protect you from a tornado or yeah. a hurricane or something. The extra you know, two inches of wood uh, from your desk. If the roof falls in, you'd want to be under the desk. Okay, all right. I'll give you that one. It never really made much sense, though, yeah. to uh, to us. Nobody ever explained that to to us. You know, it was, it was just, get under the desk, because that's what you do. It's a tornado, it's a whatever, you know, somebody's out there, some crazy shooter. Just get under the desk, kids. And it was never really explained as to, well, that would have made sense. All they would have had to say is, oh, the tornado could do structural damage to the building, and, you know, some sort of piece of the roof could fall in and impale you. I mean, they could, they could have explained it. I thought the most interesting part was seeing the teacher get under her desk because she'd do that too. Oh, yeah. It was well, awesome. Got to set the example, right? So, you know, the, while some of them seem silly and pointless, at least they weren't terrifying. I mean, maybe some of the kids were terrified by a fire drill or something like that, but I, that's never the indication I ever received from any of my classmates that it was in any way some sort of a frightening thing to go through. These days, however... It seems like the drills are a dime a dozen, that they have these drills all the time, and they are for a variety of different circumstances, some of them absolutely terrifying to the students involved, like the one that happened just recently in Winter Haven, Florida, the story coming from CBS in Tampa. Students, teachers, and parents were taken by surprise after an active shooter drill brought the Winter Haven Middle School into lockdown as armed police officers burst into classrooms with their weapons drawn. Students at Jewett Middle uh, Middle Academy said they were terrified when police officers burst in the doors for a planned active shooter drill. But students and teachers are irked that they were not told ahead of time. 7th grader Lauren Mariano told WTVT Television that when the officers burst into her class with an AR-15, she was in fear for her life. She said, we actually thought someone was going to come in there and kill us. And uh, the station quoted her as saying, but the police say they conduct these drills for the absolute safety of the students. According to Chief Charlie Bird, saying in an email to media, you should be petrified all the time. That's the way it is in America now. That's right. These types of drills are vital in order to evacuate not only law inf- excuse me, evalu- evaluate not only law enforcement response, but more importantly, to educate the students and school officials in case an actual event were to occur. Well, nothing's more educational than having uh, uh, you know armed men come in and wave guns around. I mean, that's a really educational experience that I'm sure uh, the ch- students are really going to get a lot out of that. Where's the education there exactly? That's not even really. You know, you can't even gain experience from that because it wasn't real in the first place. It was just terrifying. 
just absolutely horrifying to uh, to experience that. Parents were notified of the drill through an email after it was over, <laughs> but many parents, however, received panicked texts from their children as the drill was going on. Winter, and imagine what that would be like. You know, you're sitting there at your job or doing whatever it is you do during the day as a parent, and all of a sudden... Your son or daughter sends you a frantic text message that men with guns have just burst into the classroom. What would that make you feel? Well, I can only imagine that, uh, yeah, that would be nuts. Well, thankfully, Mark, you're not sending your son to government schools, so he probably won't be experiencing any horrors like this. No. Until the government bursts into your home and holds you at gunpoint. Uh, maybe that's what they're preparing them for here, is the regular encounter with men with guns who are purported to be your protectors. Winter Haven Police Charlie uh, Chief Charlie Bird says police are able to evaluate a school's response. He says, it's very important that when you do your drill, you do it without everyone knowing it's a drill. How you train and how you prepare is how you're going to react when everything goes bad. It really is to protect the children, and at no point in time would we endanger any of the children, said Bird. Stacy Ray told WTVT she received a text from her 7th grade daughter after two armed officers burst into her classroom. Winter Haven Police told the Post that one of the officers had his duty firearm, a handgun, drawn. The gun was loaded, as is required. Whoa. And the See, other... Oh, I, I was assuming from the get-go on this story that, uh, that we were talking about a situation where, uh, you know, they're, they're using no uh, ammunition. I mean, so they're just scaring people with big black guns but well, it's still not okay I mean, I, i'm not guns, saying it is but that's that's insane to have live rounds in there the number one rule of guns is you never point a gun at anyone you don't intend to kill that's the even number one rule even if you know even if you've triple checked and you know it's unloaded and how there's do you nothing do hollywood the movies then uh they're stuntmen and they they're professionally paid that point guns at people that they don't intend every to kill. now and then someone gets shot and killed you remember the guy from the crow it happens yeah, I mean, that dude got I'm shot. I'm just saying there. that 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 rule that you were taught is not a hard and fast rule because there are situations you're where, you know, you're doing photography or something like that and you need to see to have a picture. You keep your finger off the trigger. I mean, there's no, a nice hard, fat, that's fast That's another rule. good rule, right? You never put your finger in the trigger guard until you're ready to pull the trigger. Uh, that's all true. But, Mark, what you're describing is a situation in which both parties would be consenting, right? The cameraman and the stuntman sure. would be consenting in that particular case. But as a general rule, the number one rule is you never point a gun at somebody that you're, you know, something that you're not willing to destroy. Uh, so a gun was uh, the gun was loaded. Now, there was another officer who claimed to be carrying an unloaded AR-15, but... None of that matters. It doesn't make it any less of a terrifying situation to have that happen. In a statement the Washington Post uh, to the Washington Post, spokesperson Jamie Brown for the Winter Haven Police said they were only aware of one student who texted a parent during the exercise. So What's the biggie? <laughs> as though that every parent would alert the police that their son or daughter had texted them. So, unfortunately, no one gets an advance notice of real-life emergencies, says the spokesperson for the public schools there in Polk County in an emailed statement, quote, we don't want students to be scared, but we need them to be safe. And so, you know, look, looking at this story, this isn't an uncommon story. The police have done these drills in other places, uh, these armed or active shooter drills, as they are called. This never happened when I was in school. And, of course, the excuse for it is because, well, at some point, Columbine happened and then other school shootings, uh, so on and so forth. Right. So, Having a militarized police force is part of everyday life in America, and the kids need to be taught about everything. So this is this is how life is now. That's, that's essentially really what this is. This is what this is. It's, it's, that's what it boils down to. Is and this my, is I guess my question is, is, is that life? Is I mean, do we need, need a militarized peace, mm. uh, police force to keep us safe from the terrorists? Um, I mean, the fact is, is that violent crime has been going down in America, but police shootings have been going up. Right. Is this what you want your children learning about while they're in school? is being indoctrinated with the idea that the police should be armed and should be constantly uh, at the ready to come in and bust into rooms with arms drawn. The toll-free number is 855-453-855-450-3733. -450 -3733. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now. 
because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-856-4195. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-856-4195. That's 1-800-856-4195. Call 1-800-856-4195. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. If you're looking for work, you know what I mean by elevator speech. It's the short version, saying just enough to make the listener want to listen more. Even if you're not a job seeker, effective communication skills have never been more important with money and attention so scarce now. So to cut through the clutter, choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Instead of saying, due to the fact that, say, because, and avoid mispronunciations. Say jewelry, not jewelry, which could offend. Undoubtedly, you don't want to say undoubtedly. And whatever you do, never use a preposition to end a sentence with. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, a terrifying encounter for students at a middle school in the Tampa Bay area, Winter Haven. Uh, there's a middle school there where the police did what was called an active shooter drill. Now, this isn't the only place such a thing has happened. The Washington Post story has a picture uh, from an active shooter drill that happened in New Jersey where police had cornered their suspected gunman. I guess they had somebody acting as though they were a gunman and, you know, were holding that person at gunpoint. So this can all, you know, be done in front of students. This is all happening in front of students sitting in their classrooms as they watch this militarized police response to uh, the situation. And One thing I thought about this, uh, of this, that's, you know, sort of came up in my mind, but I, like, what if a teacher brings a gun to school in order to protect themselves, but maybe it's against the rules? Mm, okay. 
And then we have one of these active shooter drills where no one's told about what's going on. And you have mm. the, the, you know, the bad guy, um, you know, some white guy in a plaid shirt running around with a gun, right? I mean, what else right. is going to be? What if somebody responds? And a teacher, you know, takes him down. That'd be really bad for that teacher, I imagine. It would be really bad, but I mean, if it was the right under the right circumstances, that teacher's a hero. Under well, the right. wrong circumstances, that teacher's a villain. It's very interesting. Right? Yeah. Good question. I mean, what would the courts ultimately decide? I mean, certainly that teacher's uh, life would be va- made very difficult initially, but ultimately You'd lose once, a job. Right. Ultimately, once the uh, the trial goes forward. Would it then be justified? I mean, would that teacher be justified in shooting somebody that they thought was threatening the children of the school uh, in that case? I mean, even though they might lose their job, was the shooting itself, if the teacher shoots that guy, was that justified? Because in their mind, it was real. I mean, how many times do you see these prank videos where, um, you know, the the pranker that's re- trying to jump out and scare somebody gets punched in the face? Oh, yeah. Or something like that. Um, and I don't know how it is for everybody else, but I'm like, good. That's how I feel. Yeah, sometimes when I they it. really deserve it. I feel like excellent because I, I really I, I think that this is a pretty lame um, you know joke. The whole yeah. boo gotcha you know thing. I you know I mean it just not not funny to me. But you know and and it's happened to me before. Uh, somebody tried to jump somebody up on me. You? Yes. Well, somebody tried to jump up on me and scare me, and I you know. I, I, whack! I <laughs> flipped over my shoulder. So wow. yeah, I mean, on on a on tarmac, black uh, asphalt. So I want to hear you know what you think about this. We're gonna go to your calls and thoughts. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Does knowing that the police are running about through your child's government school, toting guns around, and you know doing who knows what to respond to this active shooter thing, this drill that they apparently regularly have at uh, government schools these days. Did you even know that was happening at the local government school? And if you didn't know, and now you know, how do you feel about that? Does that make you feel safe? Does it make you, as a as a parent, does it make you feel like, gosh, it's a good thing we've got these officers out there with the toting their guns around. Now, look, I'm not against guns. I mean, I, th- I totally think that, you know, you should be able to have a weapon to defend yourself. I even think you should be able to carry a gun on a school campus, because I think that would result in more safety. Uh, not less safety. So I don't want to make it sound like it's the guns that are the problem, but it's that, you know, this militarization of the police, the constant uh, hovering of the police and coming into classrooms, pointing guns at students. I mean, even if they weren't pointing the guns at the students, it would still be a scary situation. So I want to hear how you feel about it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Maybe you think the police should be doing things like this. Yeah, that's 855-450-3733. Plus, uh, antiwar.com has the answers, the facts, and the readership, but what they don't have is a pot of gold. The war machine has the magic of the Federal Reserve's printing press and the mainstream media behind them, and all antiwar.com has is you. Their staff is down to just a skeleton crew with minimal pay, and they're committed to keeping their website online with the best of the worst of all the bad news, but they can't do this for free, and they can't do this without you. They need your donation, so go to antiwar.com and donate or give them a call today. They proudly and gladly take Bitcoin, by the way. Go to antiwar.com slash donate because war is the health of the state. Let's go to you with your calls and thoughts. We've got Tim. He's in Panama City, Florida. Tim, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, thank you very much for taking my call. Welcome, sir. Go ahead. I do not think that this is a common practice or we would have heard about it before, about these armed military police, militarized police SWAT teams going into schools. We would have heard about it before. And no, it's disgusting. I don't like it. I got my kid in elementary school. I don't want to do that. I mean, I, what I do agree with is teachers be able to be uh, carry concealed weapons in school because if somebody goes into breaks into school, they can kill 100, 200 kids. But by the time the sw- any police force gets there, any SWAT teams, yeah, there'd I be think no the- problem at all. I, I think that um, I, 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 too, have some sympathy for the position, but when you have guns around, there's always the chance for some kind of mistake and that kind of thing. And people are going to be really skittish in, a, um, in an environment where kids are and even more skittish in an environment where kids are essentially forced to be there. So, um, I mean, I, I don't recommend it, but I have sympathy for the position, you know? Tim, I don't know. I mean, do you have kids in school? Yeah, he does. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, I certainly do. I have a 12-year-old in school, and I wouldn't like this 
military police force going in there like that. Like I said, if somebody wants to do harm, if people want to do harm, they know it's a gun-free zone. That's I mean, true. they can go in there and murder as, as many as they want for 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. That's not a problem. That's why if you have concealed carry like they do in some states, they do it some places in Texas. And, I mean, I know there are people who are skittish. I mean, the teachers in schools, elementary schools, are skittish if you chew a pastry to look like a gun or if you draw a hangman or a gun on a piece of paper. Yeah, that's you know, pretty ridiculous. That, that's pretty ridiculous. But, you know, this is just an extension of these SWAT teams. Why do we have to have every federal government bureaucracy like uh, uh, the Department of Education and IRS and everybody else have SWAT teams, FDA, you know? If you look Everybody's around, it's watching. not hard to find evidence of this happening, though, Tim. I, I would wonder if uh, if you asked your son or daughter, uh, whoever's in the government school there, ask them if they've encountered a drill like this. Maybe they'll tell you oh, they no. have. He, 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 he'd have told me. Okay. All right. Yeah. I sure, he I sure hope so. That they have it. But, you know, what, I'm, what I do not like happening is the militarization of, of police forces and these no-knock warrants is, I would like to know how many people this year have been killed by uh, police breaking into the wrong houses, flashbanging babies in cribs and shooting mm. people, whether they're trying to defend their own home, which is a right under our Constitution or not. And Excellent. it's not a right of any, anywhere for these police forces to be doing these no-knock raids, breaking into people's houses at 530. You know, a few months ago, somebody did that right outside of Clean in Texas, and they were breaking through a window at 530 in the morning. And the homeowner shot three, three of them, hit all of everybody he shot at. One killed one. They put the other two people in Austin in a hospital. They're try, um, they're try, um, trying to charge them. Not a surprise, Tim. Thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. These things may be more common than you realize. Uh, you know, shooting for or searching rather for active shooter drill does come up with plenty of results on Google. So if this hasn't happened in your local area, maybe you uh, have either not heard about it happening and it has been happening, or maybe you just lucked out and it hasn't happened yet. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. There was another one uh, looking at. Uh, HuffingtonPost.com, suburban high school in Chicago, where they fired blanks. I mean, talk about crazy. Wow. 855 450 Going into school, shooting. Yeah. 855-450-3733. We're here live. It's Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. More coming up. For all our loyal listeners, it's time for another giveaway. Over the next 30 days, our friends at SupernaturalSilver.com are giving away six 16-ounce Supernatural Silver liquid valued at nearly $100 per bottle or their skin and body gel priced at $49.98. All you have to do is enter and win at GCNlive.com. Hurry, contest ends December 5th. GCN can give you and your loved ones a fighting chance with the Supernatural Silver giveaway at GCNlive.com. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Free Talk Live. Pushing woman to the ground with a camera in her hand, you know, yeah. I think a real man wouldn't do that. And you got to be on roids or something to get into that state of well, mind. Well, Wayne hit it on the head. If they're not on steroids, and a number of them, some of them are, most of them probably aren't. They're not on steroids, maybe, but they're definitely high on adrenaline. Former drug task force officer, when he started with the police, you know, he would get that adrenaline rush from writing a ticket. And then, of course, he acclimated himself to it, and then he needed something else. He needed to escalate. He needed to have something else. So it, be, it, it, be, it got so extreme that he would leave people uncuffed. Like he'd bust a Coke dealer or something like that, mm -hmm. and then just leave them uncuffed on the hopes that they would get up and try to run. Uh, so he kicks some butt. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. If you are successful at what you do, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a business owner, or you have a great career, you understand the concept of protecting yourself. Well, are you protecting yourself, your family, and your assets with quality term life insurance? Consider these possible rates. A man age 45 non-tobacco user could obtain $1 million of coverage for as little as $75 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 10 years. We specialize in policies of $5. $500,000 and above. A man age 50, non-tobacco user, may be able to obtain $500,000 of coverage for as little as $115 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 20 years. We have great rates for smokers, too. Call the Term Lifeline now. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition of the program. You can bring up anything that you want. The topic on the table right now is the militarization of the police and specifically how that is spilling into the classroom. Uh, There's yet another story of yet another group of students who have been terrorized, not by, well, some actual terrorists, but by the government agents who are supposedly there to protect them, which, of course, is the excuse that the police use to run around school campuses with guns and dressed in black and threatening people, or at least appearing to threaten people, but what really they say it's all for the safety of the kids. I'd like to point out that this is something that's done by the higher-ups. This is um, probably Department of Homeland Security that's uh, passing down dictates that things like this should yeah, be they're done. They're probably doing uh, funding for this stuff. If not, it's certainly the police administration. You're not talking about the average beat cop is saying, you know what we need to do is go into uh, into the public schools and scare the crap out of those kids. You know, I wonder what people uh, we're going to get to you with your thoughts here. I'm wondering if people out there support this, because it seems pretty obvious to me that this is a horrifying thing for a a young person to experience for anyone to experience uh, to come in and be held at gunpoint or to at least feel as though someone is holding you at gunpoint. The uh, the teenagers in this case were some of them were were pretty scared. They were texting their parents during this, and of course that transfers the uh, the fear to the parents. And what is this really teaching people? Let's continue the discussion here in a moment. Bitcoin is still on the rise, and to prove it to you, you can head on over to the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference at the Moody Theater in downtown. Austin, Texas, on March the 28th and 29th of 2015. This is a ways out, but we're going to be there, and it's going to be great. It's going to be loaded with the best and brightest speakers, the latest exhibitions on Bitcoin, as well as uh, hosting the second million-dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. They've even invited the entire Texas legislature to allow them to see firsthand that not enacting complicated regulations encourages innovation and job creation. The Texas Bitcoin Conference is going to prove that Bitcoin is a force for good. And if you're knee-deep in Bitcoin or just interested, 
this is the place to be, March 28th and 29th, along with the kickoff event that they're having the evening before on the 27th. Right now, they're even doing a, a white paper call. So if you've got an idea that might make this community grow, please give them uh, contact them. TexasBitcoinConference.com. We were there last year. It was great, and we're going to be there this year. So get your tickets and uh, details about all the ways that you can be a part of the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference. You don't want to miss it. TexasBitcoinConference.com. Let's go to your calls and thoughts here. Rob is listening in West Virginia to WVTS in Charleston. Hey, Rob. Hey, buddy. Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Um, I, what, what department was that that did that, that training you guys were talking about? Uh, Winter Haven, Florida, their police department. Okay, I've I never heard and don't know how big they are. I'm, I'm a police officer. I've done that kind of training. Um, even the trainers have to go through uh, specialized training to, just to be able to teach the police officers. If those guys did go into a school and their guns were, I mean, we use training guns. We don't use the blue real ones. Guns. Like well, those... no, they're, we we use sim sim rounds. It's okay. just a, it just shoots a piece of paint at you. Yep. But that's just to hit the officer with to let him know that hey, this is this is where you messed up. You didn't check this part. The shooter was there. That's why you got hit with that piece of paint. But you also wear a, a, a paintball mask, so right. you're protected. But the, the students were pre-born, and even parents were invited to the school to, to observe it, and, and they supported it. I can imagine. And, you know, we check our guns. They even check you. And they're like, they even make you un – we had to unload our guns, unload our magazines, yeah. and store our bullets. So I can't imagine them doing that. Uh, I, I don't know. You could get on their website, I guess, and see how big of a department they are. But right. I, I just – that blew my mind when I heard that they went in there with loaded guns. Winter Haven's a city. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, right. But it's not uh, it's not the biggest city in Florida by any stretch. Now, Rob, uh, they, they, uh, so you're saying that you and your department had gone through and taken all these precautions, but still, I don't think that really addresses the concern that I have is that, you know, this is acclimating young people to being around militarized police uh, and I think that's a kind of a, a bad message to send in general. Well, that may be, but I mean, you, you've seen what happens on TV, and yeah, whatever you know, I see, what it, happens, it, it's usually the cops hanging back doing nothing while they uh, engage in op officer safety. But do you see uh, how they, you can't win one way or the other? That's not, that's not the kind of training you go through anymore. That's why you know the, the training we go through now is when when you get a call of a school shooting, it doesn't matter if you're the first officer on scene. You don't wait for a special response team anymore. All officers are trained. You head to that threat, and your main job is to take that threat out. Well, you don't that's wait an interesting anymore. thing to say, so I'll take your word for it, Rob. But thank you for the call tonight uh, because, you know, certainly Columbine. Now, I realize that was a long time ago, but Columbine, they all, you know, they hung, out, hung around outside and gave the guys enough time to sh off themselves before the police came into the building. Well, I think that they, they feel, feel a great deal of pressure because of that situation. They got a lot of police generally got a lot of critique over what happened at Columbine. And now when they have new policies in play where they're more proactive, they get critiqued for those, too. I'm not saying uh, that you know, I've got all kinds of problems with law enforcement, do, but consider for a second how difficult it is. Is, um, in a situation like that, there is no right answer. There's only an answer that you can make at the time, mm -hmm. and you can do the best with what you've got. Um, I'm on the fire department, and when you know we train for hazardous material spills and stuff like that, you're never going to do it right. These are situations where people can die. Um, you know, masses amounts of people can die, and you've just got to do your very best with what's going on. You read the the manuals. You you know you follow the procedure. Sure, but we're talking about the difference between uh, terrorizing students with all these active shooter trainings in the schools versus an actual incident of something happening. And so, you know, in the in the training version of this, you've got the cops running around the school. They've got firearms. They're uh, scaring the kids. And in the real life version, in a lot of cases, the cops hang back. You know, because they know there's actually somebody in the school with a gun and they have no obligation to come in and protect you. They have none whatsoever. I understand that the caller there was saying that they're trained to do, you know, to go right in. But that's certainly not what we've seen in the past in a lot of instances with the police. They don't go right in. And if they don't go right in, they're not held liable for not going right in. It's not like they have any sort of, you know, guarantee that they're going to keep you safe. 
Well, there's no guarantee that you're going. You're not going to get a police officer that's acting like a government bureaucrat, as opposed to a police officer that uh, you know is going to act heroic in that circumstance. But that's kind of the problem with having uh, you know a government-owned police uh, force, and it's just the nature of, of the situation. Yeah. I'm is, not okay with any of these things happening, even if it's just uh, any of these trainings. That is, you know, even if they're not carrying guns around. And apparently now the winter. How are police, they supposed to train for a school? You think they should build their own school? They should hire. They could go their own in there students? at nighttime if they wanted to, Mark. They don't have to go in and do this in front of the uh, the students. Let's continue here with Jeff in Washington, listening to KBKW. Hello, Jeff. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Oh, not much. I just wanted to jump in on this. We had another, we had a drill here in Aberdeen last weekend at the junior high school. It was on Saturday where the state patrol, the Aberdeen Police Department, and the Grace Harbor County Sheriff's all went in and did an active shooter training simulation on there. But it was on the weekend when the school was shut down and, and no, no persons that were not directly involved with it we're not allowed to be around now that makes more sense to me because you know then the officers can get a feel for the school maybe yeah, they've they, never been there before. i think they've got to know what the school's like right they have to go in there they yeah. have to know what it's like in case the situation occurs right so they can get a feel for the, sort of the layout and what it's there you know what buildings are where and that kind of thing and that makes more sense to me jeff how do you feel about it I, i'm okay with it you know um I, I agree with you guys about kids not having to be around that kind of stuff you know um, I think personally teachers should go through training and be able to carry at school teachers or janitors or whoever, or even, you know, ex soldiers, uh, veterans or somebody. Well, I think parents soldiers. should be able to, I mean, I think that anybody who wants to carry a firearm should be able to do that. I mean, I think that banning them from school campus, uh, just makes them sort of these gun free zones. And, you know, the more people that can have that training, the better, but just any old parent that uh, wants to carry should be able to, in my opinion. Yeah, by all means. I mean, it's the well-known fact that your children's safety is in your hands, not anybody else's. Yeah, thank you, Jeff, for your call tonight. I appreciate it. That's absolutely true. But what the government wants to do is subvert parents and to be the caretaker of children. Uh, we'll come back with more here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. You can share your thoughts. Do you live with stress? If you have nervousness or common everyday anxiety, we're looking for you. Because right now, we're sending risk-free supplies of a fast-acting supplement to listeners of this station. You heard right. Every listener who calls right now will learn how to get a risk-free bottle of Stress Block, a naturally-derived formula that promotes feelings of calmness, alertness, and focus in just moments. Supplies for this risk-free offer are limited, so don't wait. Stress Block is a fast-acting, non-prescription formula to support relaxation without causing drowsiness. Your nervousness is guaranteed to begin fading like magic in just minutes. This special risk-free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Call us now for this exclusive Stress Block risk-free offer. To get your risk-free supply of Stress Block, call 1-800-481-1288. That's 1-800-481-1288. 1-800-481-1288. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and, and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com this is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition. Take control of the airwaves here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The active shooter drills, as they are called. Uh, another one just happened recently in Tampa Bay. Uh, Winter Haven, to be more specific. Where is Winter Haven? Isn't that like the center of the state? Polk County. So is it? It's not really Tampa Bay, then, is it? I don't know. It depends on what you call Tampa Bay. Well, anyway, it's somewhere. It's not there. touching the Tampa Bay. No, nope, but neither nope. is Sarasota, and Good people point. call that Tampa Bay too. So Tampa uh, Bay is where you like the Buccaneers. Okay. Well, <laughs> anyway, uh, Winter Haven police were the ones involved in this, and they had themselves an AR-15 and handguns, and I imagine they had themselves more than one AR-15. Burst in the doors of uh, school, you know, school classrooms, and terrified the students. One of the students said that we thought someone was going to come in there and kill us, which is a pretty scary feeling. It seems like that's the message that's intended to be portrayed by this. So I want to know how you feel. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And what is it that is being taught by these drills? Is it that the you know students are acclimating? to the idea of always being around a militarized police force. They're being told, hey, kids, this is for your own good. This is for your safety. This is the way things are now. And they don't know another world. They don't know the, you know, where you and I might have been brought up, where this stuff didn't happen, where, you know, the, the only kind of drills you went through were the tornado drill. You get under your desk for a minute or two. Kiss your butt goodbye. Or, you, you know, the fire drill where you left the building and you got a five-minute break from being, you know, whatever the classroom curriculum was that day that was you know the the extent of what i went through when i was in these government schools and now you've got men with guns bursting into classrooms i mean that's a pretty uh, different situation and if that's what students are experiencing from elementary school on up then uh, you've got some pretty serious kind of brainwashing some uh going on here don't you think it's scary stuff. The toll-free number is 855 free. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. We've got Aaron on Skype. Aaron, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Ian and Mark. Hey, go ahead. I was thinking about uh, my 8-year-old and how fearless he is. Like he, he doesn't know enough to be afraid. And it also seems that everyone I know who supports government has some thing that they're afraid of that they want government to fix. Do you think that the government intentionally teaches kids to be afraid in order to have dependent citizens? Oh yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, you know, the the state itself seems to really profit off of the concept of fear. I mean, if there is no fear, then 
You need no protection. Well, right. And the state's big thing that it sells is protection. Look at the war on terror, the war on drugs. These are two very big boogeymen that uh, have been created by the state. These sort of never-ending conflicts, the war on drugs. How do you have a war on an inanimate object? I mean, these things keep being churned out. Uh, you can arrest as many drug dealers as you want to, but the drugs are still there, and the drugs get worse over time as the state continues their crackdown. And so there's still that scary specter of, your kids could be addicted to drugs and you need us to save you from them. But now, you know, in the last decade or so, we've moved into this war on terror, which has taken that level of fear and really ramped it up because now there's the possibility that somebody somewhere could get bombed. And so, therefore, more state is necessary, more police, militarization, more tanks, bearcats, uh, you name it, MRAPs, whatever the equipment of the moment happens to be. And, of course, the, pro the police parading those things around, uh, rolling them up in situations like this. You've got uh, the stories like the college students. Remember the college stories that we've told? Like, There's been a couple of incidents within the last couple of years where somebody on campus has had a sword. Uh, the guy on uh, Connecticut College campus, he had a sword as part of a Halloween costume, and the police were called. They brought in the Bearcat. They had cops in fatigues carrying, uh, you know, assault rifles. Just a horrifying situation. They had dozens of police respond to that. Yeah, I think that it can overre they can overreact in these circumstances, but remember how often they've been critiqued for underreacting. Um, I knew a Vermont state police officer told me a story about how he caught a drunk guy with no shirt on dragging a big giant claymore. That's a that's one of those two handed swords mm -hmm. down the road, said he's gonna go kill his friend for something about I don't know, money, a girl, something. But don't you think it could also be that people raised in that kind of culture of fear could then grow into become government officials and police officers that then compounds the issue? Yeah, and then I think where true. does this start? <laughs> and how does it how do we end it? Well, the only way you to end you can end it is to withdraw your support. I mean, to get your kids out of the government schools. This is yet another reason why you should not have your children, if you care about them, in my opinion, in government schools. Because who would want to subject their kids to this active shooter drill concept? This sounds just absolutely horrifying. Yeah, but you make every when when everybody's made to pay for the government school, it's obvious people are gonna choose uh, the quote unquote free option. Oh, the I free option that, that costs more more than uh, any other option. Well, you know, having more freedom in life sometimes can be costly. And in this case, I think that if you, you know, if you really care about your kids, then you should shoulder whatever cost and burden is necessary to do that. That's what you're doing, Mark. You're not sending your son to the government schools. I choose not to do that. Right. Well, but I understand how expensive it is, too. I mean, there's a, uh, we, we, my son just goes to sort of, a, I don't know, if it's a program more than a school. And that's expensive. Aaron, anything else you want to share tonight? I just it also seems that exposing every single child to this kind of shooter drill, maybe they would have never thought of shooting up a school before, but now they have. Hmm. Interesting point. Aaron, thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate it. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty three. David's in Panama City. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, David. Hey Mark, how are you tonight? Good. Listen, the answer uh, too. Go ahead, David. You know, uh I'm going to tell you something. You know, it comes to my mind that, you know, I remember some older school teachers when I was in school many, many years ago. And, you know, this could give some uh, teacher a heart attack. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, and there's right. one other thing. I, I, I'm less scared thing. about what's going to happen to the students than I am than what's going to happen with the teachers. How about the parents who are getting the text messages from their children saying they're being, you know, attacked at school by some, you know, crazy men with guns? How many parents are going to try to rush to the school and get in a traffic accident right. Dad, or something Dad like that? shows up with an AR-15. Yeah. Well, being, being more than afraid, uh, being scared to death is a fact. Absolutely true, David. Anything else you want to share tonight? Uh, yes, I would like to share myself. I'm a victim of Big Pharma and the doctor uh, collusion. Uh, they, had me on a, they had me on a medicine called Avidart. And it's for an enlarged prostate for nine years. And come to find out, I never had an enlarged uh, prostate. Oh and no. I also heard on a, yeah. And that's stuff like it drove me nuts. Plus, the, it runs a higher risk of getting cancer. And I'm a victim mm. on that. But there's a lot of victims on that. But anytime anybody listening that can hear this radio station should know that there's a big collusion going on between these doctors and big pharma, and that if they tell you you have an enlarged prostate, you better get a second or third opinion. 
And also, mm-hmm. I heard on ABC News a little brief between, uh, you know, the programs. I listen to radio a lot. Yep. Talk. And uh, the country of Poland has a big lawsuit against a big pharmaceutical company in the U.K. for paying their doctors cash money in their country of Poland to write their prescriptions. Also, yeah. Tampa, Florida. It happens here, too, where they don't, they're not allowed to give them cash money, but they can still give them things like cruises and other uh, perks. Well, that's legal, but they're yeah. giving them cash money. Now they're paying them in Smith Klein, Guy Close, Guy Close Smith Klein in Tampa, the great big pharmaceutical company. And I heard on ABC News that there was so many people that had lawsuits against them from them paying the doctors money, cash money, that they're going to have to sell the whole uh, ordeal in Tampa, the whole pharmaceutical mm. company. Uh, to pay all the lawsuits. David, off. thanks for your call so, tonight. Appreciate the uh, the thoughts. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. It's hard to trust those doctors, man. Well, it is hard for me to believe that a uh, large multinational uh, pharmaceutical company could get a lawsuit so big against it that it's going to shut it down. I just I, that sounds I, optimistic. Yeah. yeah, I just don't believe that. I mean, that's not how the system's designed. The system's designed it's for designed rich people, yeah. um, and in, in this case, corporations. But I mean. You know, throughout history, all of the apparatuses of the state um, have always been skewed towards the wealthy because the wealthy are the ones that can buy the people with power. Zach's in Chicago. You're on Free Talk Live. Zach. Hi. Thanks for having me. Sure. Go ahead. Um, I just got off work and I started listening on what you're saying about this uh, school event. Now, it seems, from what you guys say, it seems a bit excessive what the guys, what the officers did, and I would never promote that. I think everything should happen in moderation. Now, I am from Chicago, and I grew up in a high school in Chicago, and there was gang activity. We had a couple cops um, that were here, um, and it didn't make things feel safer. I think if we are going to have police officers in schools, though, they should be specifically trained to deal with children or young adults or be officers that are well-known in the community with the young and not have officers who may seem threatening because you don't, nobody really wants a strong police presence because that could create bad uh, results as well. But I think definitely it depends on where you're at as well. Uh, now Zach, thanks. City, Hang on, man. We'll bring you back. It's Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Thanks to Bitcoin, LRN.FM is able to provide our free-to-air satellite channel across North and Central America. You can listen to LRN.FM 24-7 via satellite for no monthly cost. Learn more about our satellite channel at sat.lrn.fm. And if you'd like to help us continue to expand, you can send us Bitcoins via the address you'll find under the Bitcoin graphic in the right column of LRN.FM. To learn more about Bitcoin, visit weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, November 15th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.30 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,190 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $379. Antiwar.com reports Houthi gains in southern and central Yemen continue to mount the face of fierce resistance from Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, seizing another district in the Marib province. The fighting saw 35 fighters, including 25 Houthis, killed and a number of others wounded. The Houthis chased Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and its allies across the border into the Beda province. In addition to the fighters killed in the clashes, another 15 Sunni civilians were reportedly killed in Rada, where the Houthis were shelling areas still resisting their takeover. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula territory is shrinking with the Houthi advance, and with the Houthis backed by part of the Yemeni military, they seem likely to keep advancing deeper and further cementing their hold on power. In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit tour.fppradio.com. That's T-O-U-R dot F-P-P-Radio dot com. Reuters reports the Republican-led U.S. House of Representatives approved the Keystone XL pipeline on Friday, but a similar measure struggled to get enough support in the Senate and President Barack Obama indicated he might use his veto if the bill gets through Congress. Approved by a vote of 252 to 161, the legislation circumvents the need for approval of TransCanada Corp's $8 billion project by the Obama administration, which has been considering it for more than six years. No Republican voted against the measure, while 31 Democrats voted for the measure. It was the ninth time the U.S. House has passed a Keystone bill, and supporters were confident that this time the Senate would follow suit and pass its version. But passage was not assured in the Senate, which is expected to take up the measure next Tuesday. Supporters were still one vote shy of the 60 needed to overcome a filibuster, a blocking procedure, an aide to a Keystone supporter said on Friday. The aide spoke on the condition of anonymity. Approval for the pipeline, which would help transport oil from Canada's oil sands to the U.S. Gulf Coast Energy Hub, has rested with the Obama administration because it crosses an international border. The decision has been pending amid jousting between proponents of the pipeline who say it would create thousands of construction jobs and environmentalists who say it would increase carbon emissions linked to climate change. If the measure did pass Congress, Obama would have to decide whether to make rare use of his veto power. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. UPI reports protesters say they plan a peaceful shutdown of the business district in Clayton, Missouri after the release of a grand jury decision in the shooting of Michael Brown. Brown, an unarmed 18-year-old, was killed by Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson. The grand jury is meeting in Clayton, the seat of St. Louis County. At a meeting Thursday night in St. Louis, organizers said they want to hold the Clayton protest on the first business day after the grand jury makes its decision. They identified other protesters test hotspots, including the Ferguson police station. Wilson has not yet been charged with Brown's killing. His supporters say he fired in self-defense after Brown attacked him. The shooting in August set off a series of demonstrations that sometimes turned violent. Police responded with arrest and tear gas. At Thursday's meeting, organizers emphasized the goal of non-violence. Michael McPherson, co-chairman of the Don't Shoot Coalition, said, One of the reasons we're here is to have fun and build community. We're in 
a struggle that takes a long time to make things happen. In order for it to be a movement, we have to stay in it. McPherson said the group expects hundreds, if not thousands of people to join the demonstrations. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Good morning. Later this afternoon, I will be engaging in an extramarital affair. Of course, I will wish that I had never made the horrible mistake I'm about to spend several hours making, but sadly, I'm currently too blinded by greed and lust to care about or consider the consequences of my actions. The liaison I will be taking part in shortly with two poor deaf teenage runaways is in direct opposition to the values you elected me to uphold. I also wish to apologize to my wife, Linda, to my two beautiful children, Allison and Christopher. It hurts me more than you will ever know that this scandal will impact your life so terribly. I can only pray that the revelations you will soon hear concerning my fetishes, physical flexibility and penis will not scar you to the point of dementia. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get to the hotel immediately, so I will not be taking questions. Thank you. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. Get interactive there. We've got the uh, main page of the website where you can create the content that you see there. Uh, and what I mean by that is it's a Reddit-based site, so you can submit a news article, blog post, you know, some sort of YouTube video, whatever it is that's online you think we would appreciate or our listeners would enjoy. You submit it there to the site, and then others can vote on whether they like or dislike it. So go and get interactive at freetalklive.com. With you tonight, you've got Ian. And Mark. And again, our toll-free number, 855-453. If you're just tuning in, there's a disturbing story we started the show out with tonight. Of course, you can bring up anything you want, but out of Winter Haven, Florida, where students at... Jewett Middle Academy, it appears to be a government magnet school, uh, were subjected to a terrifying active shooter drill where officers burst into classrooms uh, holding weapons, some of them at the ready, uh, AR-15 as well as a handgun at the very least. One student texted mom saying that she thought someone was going to come and kill her when this was happening. It's pretty scary stuff. What else would you think? Uh, we've got your calls and thoughts here. Welcome on this. Especially, would love to hear from people who think, this is a good idea. Let's have the cops running around the schools on a regular basis, terrifying uh, students and, uh, of course, indoctrinating them to believe that they need the government to keep them safe. And what else does this teach? What else does it uh, inculcate these kids with? And I think that it, the number one thing it teaches is for them to get used to the militarized police being around and being a regular part of their lives. Because it wasn't like that when I was growing up. And, you know, I'm not that old. I'm in my mid-30s right now. It wasn't like that back then. It is now. And the toll-free number, again, is 855-453. We had Zach in Chicago on the line at the very end of the last hour. Zach, you said when you were going to school in Chicago uh, that you had two student uh, police, or I guess police resource officers, whatever they call SRO, student resource officers. But uh, they didn't seem like a resource to you. You guys uh, didn't really much care for them. Is that right? Um, they were actually, we had a lot of gang activity in my school mm -hmm. and they were pretty helpful. I know it really goes on a base by base. Um, oh, I th I'm sorry. I thought you had said that you, uh, the students did not appreciate the presence of the police there, that they weren't assisting. Some did. And, um, we never really had anything like this happen. I think what had happened in the school in Florida was an extreme excess. And I think that it should only, those kind of forces should be used only when it's necessary. Um, I think in this instance, when I went to school, it was needed. However, I did, I think it depends on where you're at. Like if you're in a rural school, of course you don't probably need police or anything of that nature to be in your school because there's less likely of violence or what have you. But um, I did, after I graduated high school, I went to a college that didn't have any kind of security or anything. I only ended up going there for a semester because I felt really unsafe there. I definitely did appreciate the police being there, but again, I think everything is in should be in moderation. And I think if cops are going to be in high schools, at least, I think elementary schools is excessive. But 
I think that they should be specifically trained to be around children or be remodels with young adults. I think it has to do with around. concentrating people in too small of an area is what um, you know. My, my take on it is. I've got a son. He's six years old. I have no intention of sending him not just to government school, but any school where they're putting a whole bunch of grades in there, where they've got 20 kids per student. When you've got hundreds of kids in a building, you're making it a target for people who want to, you know, create terror and make a terrible place and also it's like packing rats in a cage at some point or another they're going to fight if they've got enough room they're fine if they don't have enough room it's not fine and i think that's what it really comes down to is is that the whole model of education that we have today is really an inst it's institutionalized training is what it is it was intended to uh, create good workers for the industrial era we're well beyond that now mm. and um you know that it's it's outlived its usefulness and and now it's just a it's basically government funded middle class babysitting services zach thanks for your call tonight appreciate it the number is 855 450 free of course one of the other things you're talking about this training uh these government schools are for students and training in you know obedience essentially obedience training uh the other thing that it's training them is to have video cameras everywhere watching their every move uh, so they're constantly on closed circuit television channels in a lot of these government schools these days. Some schools remember the stories where they're uh, making their students wear RFID badges to identify themselves when they walk got into the to, class. You, you have to do that sort of thing when you have this these kind of big institutions. You mean treat them like cattle? A lot like that. Let's go to your call. Then again, here. colleges manage to do it, um, have much larger classes, um, and not have to track kids. It's because you don't have to force somebody to be there. Well, right. The college doesn't care if you show up for the class or not, as long that's as you, you, the check clears. That's because you pay. Right. So Dana is on the line in our very own Keene, New Hampshire, listening to WKBK. Hello, Dana. Hey, how are you guys? Hey, go ahead, sir. You know, the problem is, and I'm preaching to the choir to you guys, but with the growth of government, you know, uh, police forces and uh, government agencies have to continually file, find more and more things, you know, uh, crimes to prosecute and things to support their bloated government. I watched a good show, I don't know, maybe two months ago, August, September, on Ron Paul and, and uh, detailed interview, and he was talking about, you know, uh, even now compared to the early 80s, it was like 190 different things that you can get arrested for now that you couldn't even back in the early 1980s. Hmm. And it all comes down to just the size of government. You know, it's the, it, it's just, you know, you, with, with the growth of government, you lose more and more liberties, and that's just the way that it is. Yeah, it's they're just, certainly not repealing any of the laws. They it, just keep adding them. It's concentrated in areas like schools and airports and places right. like this, government institutions where lots of people pass through. That's where the uh, that's where you really see the rubber hit, hitting the road as far as the state growing. Mm. Well, here's the thing, too. I go to I travel to foreign countries quite a bit on part of my work, and uh, um, I was coming back from. Brazil one time four years ago, and I flew into, um, I'm sorry, I've come back from the Dominican Republic. I flew into Boston, and I'll never fly into that airport again. When you get off the plane there, I mean, they treat you just like a terrorist. And <laughs> when you get off the plane? The oh, I guess you're coming it's back from the country. Customs okay. and Border Patrol. Yeah, when you're coming back into the country. I mean, I, fl I flew in actually last night into into uh, Miami. It's fine, those airports, but Boston, it's just so concentrated with, with uh TSA and government agents, I mean, I walked up to a government a TSA agent, and I said to him, you know, I got a question for you. And she said, back off. <laughs> keep your distance. And I wow. said, I got a question. She says, keep your distance. And they were going <laughs> through my bag. Right. And now these I are the people my, that were my... th that previously before uh, Bush nationalized the uh, the, the local the, the the airline apparatus. These people were just paid security working for airlines. They would have yeah. never treated you that way. And now they get the little sewn on right. badge. They got, badge. And they got the little sewn no, they on got badge. real badges now. Oh, they got a real badge. Okay, yeah. fine. Um, whatever. It I mean, was it's, a big deal for them. To get it's a real ridiculous. Badge. And no law enforcement officer considers them law enforcement officers. No, but I, I stood in front of one of them. I'm not exaggerating. I stood in front of one of them, and she's going through my bag. And I had my hands in my pocket, and she said, take your hands out of your pants, out of your pocket. You've got to be kidding me. I said, I'm dead serious. I swear to you. I said, what for? Because I said so. Take them out of your pants. Yep. And you can't really argue too much with them because they'll take you in the back room and detain you. Sure will. You know, and, and make your life hell for two or three hours. And it's just, that is the only airport I've ever had that experience. Other airports, they're fine, but... 
I mean, it just shows you that the it's just it's out of control. Even Rand Paul, uh, Ron's son, went through um, one of these screeners and he wanted to get checked instead of instead of run through the uh, the uh, X ray thing there. The opt out. Stuck him in the yeah. back room. Yeah, they opted out. They stuck him in the back room and and harassed him for an hour and a half. And he's a U.S. senator. I mean, <laughs> it's. It's insane. It's insane. Yeah. The whole the whole thing is insane. And it's really tough, you I know, mean, to deal with because how do you really combat it, right? I mean, you you can only stand up for your right. rights so far. I mean, most of the time you're going somewhere, so if you miss your plane, you might miss your meeting. Uh, you right. Know, so you've got to you've got to suck it up usually and and go through with the abuse. And it's you know it's not something that's going to change anytime soon. And I wish I had a better you know viewpoint on the outlook for the future of that sort of thing. But I I, I just don't. Dana, thanks for your call, man. I appreciate the experience. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Until we can somehow defederalize the airports, I mean, when's that going to happen? The federal government could crash and burn. That would be the soonest to think right. that you know, really you're looking at. <laughs> the airports will become autonomous states. We'll come back with more here in moments. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Of course, there's also secession. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 68 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? 
At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition of the to- uh, the, uh, the the program. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. On Free Talk Live, we do talk a lot about alternative currencies. And sure, we love Bitcoin. If you've got some Bitcoin, you want to throw it in the tip jar, go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com. But we also really like precious metals like gold and silver. Look, you know, Bitcoin's new, it's hot, but gold and silver are tried and true. These are great ways, in my opinion, to protect yourself against inflation, to protect yourself against the terrible monetary policy of the U.S. uh, federal government or whichever government you happen to be uh, living underneath. This is an international radio show. And gold and silver, like Bitcoin, are international alternative currencies. People value these things all around the world. And Midas Resources can get them to you. Gold and silver pieces, beautiful rounds and other options. Uh, You can go and see some of their inventory at silver.freetalklive.com or give them a call toll-free at 877-857-9938. That's 877-857-9938. Or go to gold.freetalklive.com to get yourself some gold and silver. This is real gold and silver, not some sort of paper that tells you that you have gold and silver in a vault somewhere. They actually ship you real gold and silver. What we call that is lies. Yeah. So uh, get some over at gold.freetalklive.com. And when you do, through that link or that phone number, uh, Free Talk Live benefits... Uh, because that Midas Resources is the company that backs up our show in that they actually own the syndicate that helps distribute Free Talk Live to over 150 great radio stations from coast to coast. So you get the silver and gold you're looking for, and you help Free Talk Live out all at the same time through gold.freetalklive.com. We're talking about the ridiculous situation that has been developing over the last decade or so, it seems, uh, in government schools, where more and more often we're starting to hear stories about the these active shooter drills. But even if it wasn't the active shooter drills, I can remember about a decade ago, maybe about eight eight years ago on this program, I think it was Goose Creek, South Carolina, where the police went into a school looking for marijuana. They were on a drug hunt, and they came in with guns drawn and with police dogs, and they came in there, and they terrified the students there as well. So, you know, it's not like it's all about, uh, it's not like the only excuse they've ever needed to come into schools with guns uh, and point them around uh, students has to do with active shooters. They use the war on drugs as their excuse previously. Yeah. So what's new? I'm... (laughs) I know that there's a, it's it's a disturbing trend, right? Like police are getting more and more involved in public schools. It makes perfectly good sense that that would happen over time. But, I, you know, I mean, I think people are disturbed by it. Obviously, this case with the active shooter drill where they, you know, they don't tell the teachers, they don't tell the students what's going on. This is beyond the pale. But it's it's getting more and more common. But, right, that's the thing. To you and to me, it seems beyond the pale. But to the students... This is normal. The, to the students, this has happened, uh, you know, in in schools all across the country. From what I understand, these drills are not uncommon. Now, maybe they are not common to all school dr- districts, but the school districts in which they happen, you can count on them happening again. And so if this happens on a regular basis or even an irregular basis, it'll become a regular basis. And before you know it, everybody's acclimated to it then they're used to seeing the police do this stuff, bust into classrooms with guns drawn. Now, the cops in Winter Haven are backing up. They're saying, well, we're not going to have guns next time, as though that somehow makes everything okay to come in shouting, uh, to come in, you know, wearing black, uh, to come in and just being intimidating and scary. And the police are scary. They're not your friends. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's get Carl on the line in New Jersey. You're on Free Talk Live, Carl. Well, here's what I have to say. Our schools are locked. So how do they get in? Uh, let me look. We got two veterans on Veterans Day coming in. 
we don't have any mention of 12 cops with guns. Sorry, you must have the wrong school. I'm not letting you in. And they say, well, you're ruining our drill. You let us in or we're arrested. I belong to the school union. You can't touch me, you fools. But who did let them in? No superintendent or schools. No school board's going to allow that to happen to the children. Who let them in? What would make you think that? I mean, most school boards are very, uh, you know, accommodating to the police. Yeah, but no, no. To have children with cell phones calling their parents thinking they're going to die that day? No, nobody's going to let that happen. Bad choice. Uh, no way. Well, yeah, you might be surprised. This isn't the only example are, of this happening. Yeah, how many kids are going to therapy there at that school now because of what happened? That's a fine question. I mean, I, it was a terrifying yeah. experience from what I understand, Absolutely. but I think more government bureaucrats would let these cops in than you think. I think All you're giving right, them too much shame. credit. Thanks, Carl, for the call tonight. Right. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Bob. He's in Panama City. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Bob. Hey, how you doing? Good. You're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, I've been waiting on, on hold here for 15 minutes just to be able to put my two cents in. That's how we do it. It's talk radio. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I want to comment on the police officers charging this school and going in these classrooms with guns. There's nothing, there's no defense for that. It's nothing but total ridiculous. Anybody what would you do about it? I mean, what, as a parent, what could you possibly do about it besides pull your kids out of the school? Well, unfortunately, my kids are long gone out of school. They're grown and they've got their own kids in school. But, um, you know, it's just ridiculous. I pulled my kids out of that school, number one. If my kids were in that school where those cops came in there with guns drawn, scaring the daylights out of them, my kids would not be going back to that school again. I think that's the best solution. Bob, thanks for your call tonight. Toll-free numbers 855-450-FREE. Let's continue. Mike is on the line calling from Anonymous. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Mike. How you doing? I'm a state law enforcement officer, and i just like to say I— Enjoy some of your opinions on your show. However, what I can't stand about you guys is that you make it out to be to you make it out that every law enforcement officer is an evil person. No, we've said, never done that. You, you just said that they you weren't your said, friends. You just said it weren't they weren't your friends. That's what you just said. Generally, they're I not your you friends. Said, they're looking for reasons to that's arrest that's you. That's not true. No, sir. I'm a law enforcement officer of over nine years. I serve the public. I'm here to protect people. And when I hear people like you who are fear mongers, okay, that, that make it seem like I took my career to help and save people, okay, and keep people safe. I'm a highway patrolman. I, I patrol the highways. I used to work for the sheriff's office. Have you ever arrested okay? anyone for uh, possession yes, of sir. drugs? Yes, unfortunately I have to because it's my job. No, you don't. But let's you can use discretion. To... No, sir, I hate to tell you, but if you read a statute, there's two ways of discretion with it. If it's a misdemeanor, you can give them a notice to appear. Or you have to arrest them on spot, okay? That's nonsense. So that's how that works. Uh, well, officers have discretion. Looking. They can decide to look the other way. You could go away. No, 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 no. No, it doesn't. So if somebody's getting shot at, I can look the other way? No, I'm not talking that's about somebody do. getting shot at. First of all, you don't have an obligation to protect anyone. I mean, it's great that if you do. I do you, have an obligation do. to protect someone. I hate Sorry, to tell you, you don't. but that's why we do our, oh, well. The so uh, Supreme no Court uh, has ruled do. over and over no. again. I mean, you f you may feel like you have a personal obligation that you feel like you should protect Thank somebody. Goodness. No, and good for you we, there. We are, but it, It's in the statute that you're supposed to go and render aid, okay? That's mm -hmm. what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to go into what the happens to you if you don't? where there's a shooting. Uh, we can get, we get fired. We'll you get could get fired. Job. Would you get and fired? It, it's called cowardice. Excuse me, it's called cowardice. All right, I'll tell you what, Mike, I want you to okay. hang on. If you got time, I want to bring you back here. We can continue the discussion. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Yeah, look, I'm sorry. Until the police are not arresting peaceful people who haven't harmed anyone else, then they're not your friends. You can't trust them. There's more coming up here. It's Free Talk Live. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? 
I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. (laughs) If you're a parent, chances are you know all about the spooky truth books with subjects ranging from shadowy fraternal organizations to mind-controlling TV shows. Kids can't get enough of this series of short, scary children's novels. And spooky truth author K.L. Graves is joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Now, my kids just love these books. In just four years, you put out 25 books. It came from Tower 7, Curse of the Chemtrails, The Zionist Who Cried Holocaust. Now, this stuff has really been catching on. Over 40 million copies sold so many bestsellers out there. I've been thrilled. Before this series, I was self-publishing pamphlets and handing them out on the train. Now I get emails from teachers and parents all the time telling me that my books are all their kids can talk about. Well, it's true. My son used to hate to read. Now he's holed up in the basement with these spooky truth books all day and night. Says he never watches TV, doesn't even want tap water anymore. He just loves reading so much. This is the Onion News Network. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited here to take control of the airwaves. Toll free number 855-450-FREE. We're talking about the police, the uh, continued militarization of the police, the exposure of this militarized police force to government school students. As we've seen uh, just recently, Winter Haven, Florida, police bursting into classrooms during a supposed active shooter drill and terrifying students. The police were armed uh, during this drill. But even if they weren't armed, it's still a scary experience. And we've actually got a law enforcement officer, uh, someone claiming to be a state trooper. I believe his claims. Uh, we'll bring him back on here in a moment. But first, I want to tell you how to get a car with Bitcoin anywhere. Yeah, yeah if you've got Bitcoins and you need a car, New Age Auto Sales has late model used cars that they've cared for in their rental fleet. And since they're from their rental fleet, um, they... You don't have to pay any of the auction fees or transport costs that normally come with a used uh, car. Their cars are in great shape, and they're priced to move. They can ship them anywhere in the world. 
So go to newageautosales.com and see what they have. They're looking to be the Bitcoin auto dealer. But obviously, if you are um, you see something you like and you don't have enough Bitcoins, they can help you there too. But with Bitcoin, your money never has to be exchanged into U.S. dollars. It's newageautosales.com for late model, well-maintained cars shipped anywhere in the world for Bitcoin. Head on over to their website and give them a call and buy a car from the first Bitcoin auto dealership, newageautosales.com. All right, we go back to the phones here and your calls and thoughts. Mike is calling from Anonymous. Uh, he uh, says he's a state trooper and is upset at some of the conversations we've had on Free Talk Live regarding the police uh, that I'm painting an unfair with an unfair broad brush when I talk about you know how the police aren't your friends and you shouldn't trust them. And I wish that was, wasn't was the case, Mike. I mean, I wish I could trust the police. I wish that the police were uh, friends. And it's not to say I'm not friendly with the police. I have conversations with the local police in the area. But Sir, I, I say hello to your children every day. If your kids come up to me, I say hi. I'll say hi to kids. We're not these evil people that you you, you portray. Okay? I didn't say you were evil, every, but what you're well, doing no, no. is wrong in a lot of cases by arresting peaceful well, people who have not harmed anyone else, sir. Well, see, now you're talking in generalities. We don't. I don't know what situation you're talking about. A marijuana user about. is not harming anyone else. Okay. Uh, so putting if them in handcuffs. At, if you're upset, if you're upset at the police for that, you can blame your politician for making it a law. No, I will okay, blame the police dead. for enforcing no. bad laws, sir. No, well, you have to blame your politician, sir. Because you are responsible service. every single day for going out and doing what those politicians tell you to do because you could say no if you really wanted to. If you wanted to be a and hero, then, then, you could tell those politicians to screw off. It's the same idea when somebody tells me, oh, you don't have to write me a ticket. If I don't write it, guess what? They'll find somebody else. You'd will. use the same your, excuse your blame, if you were rescuing, uh, uh, if you were capturing escaped is, slaves. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. Okay, so back in the place. 1800s, if you were a police now, officer, now you're just now you're going off on a tangent. I'm no, a it's not a tangent at all. An officer, yes, because I'm talking about enforcing laws such as your marijuana use, which you like think the is fugitive the slave world. acts. Let me let me tell you something. We're talking about the children. We're talking about training, and he didn't let me finish. Okay, yes, what happened with those kids if they were not aware, as well as the students, I mean the teachers, as well as the parents. Yeah, that's wrong. Okay, but when you go and you paint a picture that every law enforcement officer you can't trust, let me tell you something. You can't. They lie. When you call 911, and I know you might not, but when most people do when they're in trouble, they call for me. They call for other officers, and we're there to help. Okay, we're not there to, to mistreat people, and you keep talking about this drugs like it's the end of the world. Let me tell you something, buddy. Most cops, okay, we want to help people. We want to save people. We want pe people, pe people. I don't doubt that's true, so stop putting them in cages. Until your politicians drop all this war on drugs, guess what? We're at war. You understand? So Mike, <laughs> Mike um, listen. Boy, I really trust this you. This is Mark, and I'm, uh, I've been the biggest uh, advocate for the police on this show for the longest time, but what happened to me was that I would see these videos where people would be getting beaten by police, and what I would see is I'd see multiple police officers standing around. And then, you know, have one— you been a police officer? Have you ever done my job? I have I've never been a radio host, but I can just tell you, go be a cop for two years. Okay, and see what dangers you come across. And you talk about all these generalities I've seen in this video. Okay, great. Did you even live or even see what happened in that court he uh, hearing afterward? Do you even know the whole ramifications? You just watch your YouTube. It's not the you first video. No, no, it's not oh, one glimpse. I know glimpse. there's a lot of It's them. videos after I video. That. Right, and then oh, what yeah. I don't see I is see I don't it. see police officers arresting the police officer that offends. I've seen two cases in 10 years I've done this show where a police call officer has arrested another attorney. police officer. Call your local state attorney. Attorney. Call your local state attorney and get charges to be dropped on that person. Okay? What? You, understand I, you, how mean, that works? I, you mean I can bring charges? Because it's my understanding the state brings charges. And that's that... what I'm saying. You're, you're a public figure. How about you go bring it to any state attorney that you know of, whatever state you're from, and you see this uh, supposed allegations that this, there's a police brutality that you see on TV or in person, go take it to the sheriff, take it to the state. It's going everywhere, and you know as well as I do that it, you know, the, the unions protect the officers, the officers know how to work the system. No, sir. I hate to tell you, sir, the unions don't protect anybody. <laughs> grand jury trials, that's where we go. There's no any, it's there's the no state's attorney at that's trial. at the grand jury. I mean, the that's, the average that's filing charges against you if you have if you're violating the law, sir. But look, that's everybody violates works. the law. There's they so did. many laws, nobody cannot violate them. Listen, I'm going to say one thing. Okay, I I believe what you guys do is great. It's free talk radio. It's what makes America great. 
you guys are good people that you have this opinion. All I'm just saying is don't paint the picture that every cop out there is an evil person. I've never people, said that. We believe just like, well, I've never I said that. You, but all on this program, don't you say fear us. Don't fear us. Be cautious, okay? If you think that you need to be cautious, fine. But don't say fear the police. Okay, because we're people. But what about we believe for you? You're the, people who have okay? the right to use violence against peaceful people, and you get away with it over and over again. And there's and a reason why people are scared of you. you there's a reason why people don't trust you. You don't want to hear charges. it. You don't no, want to hear it, that. Mike. You're talking about generalities, man. You're you about generalities. are not interested in you, listening. You, Mark you can't, can't even get through a sentence without you continuing to babble. No, you know why? Because I watched and listened to you guys. This is your show. It's my turn to talk for all these cops that get mad about hearing how all these other cops make us all look bad. We guess have what? a lot of cops that call here no. and agree with what we say. You just make yourself to be clear, look Mike. bad, man. I mean, well, guess you... what? I'm going to tell you straight up. You guys have great, have great arguments sometimes. All i got to say is just stop painting the picture that we're all bad. Mike, that's so all will I you stop you repeating that for a moment? Because I have said no, clearly that I think thing. that many police get into the job. i got to go home now. All right, all right brother. Bye. Goodbye. I, what I've said clearly, clear. now that you, you know, you're gone, maybe you'll actually listen uh, to what we're saying, is that the police... I, you know, they're. I think they are getting into it. Most of them, a lot of them, for good reasons. They want to help people. I understand that. I don't doubt that's the case. But unfortunately, this mentality that he has—that well, if the if the legislature say it's illegal, then we're at war, and that means they're at war with you. If you're a drug user, if you've had marijuana ever in your life, if your son or daughter has marijuana with them right now and they're driving home or they're driving to work or something like that, they have a bag of pot in the car, that guy's at war with them. Why should they trust someone who says they're at war with them? Okay, so I understand how Mike feels, right? If someone's at war with you, you should probably fear that person. <laughs> Mike they might doesn't hurt want you. Mike doesn't feel like a villain and doesn't want to be treated like a villain, and I understand. So stop I, acting like one. Well, I understand where he's coming from. You're always harping on the drug issue, and I get it. But the drug issue really is getting wrapped up. The marijuana issue is getting wrapped up over time here. Um, you know, the attitudes are changing Not in this country. thanks to people like him. No, they, they, I agree. But the 50,000 raids that go on in this country every single year, many of them, when you have that many raids going on, they're mm. going to be on houses that uh, they weren't supposed to be on. And even so, doesn't a drug user have the right to defend their home? So really, the, the the problem is is within police departments, and I believe it's this from the top down, not from the bottom up, is really what the problem. I don't believe Mike is, uh, you know, the police chief. And, no, he's a state uh, trooper. Yeah, I think he's just a guy who hands, uh, you know, he's an armed fundraising agent who probably should be re replaced with a uh, speed camera rather than, uh, you know, putting these guys on the road. There's a rare instance when somebody's driving dangerously that you need a police officer because a camera can't really yeah, figure that out. speed cameras don't bust uh, potheads. Well, there's that. Yeah. Look, uh, the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. I want to like the police. I really do. I'm friendly with many of the officers in the Keene area because I think that having conversations with these guys and you know connecting with them on a human level is a good thing to do. But that doesn't mean I trust the police. Well, every defense attorney, every attorney will say, do not speak to the police because everything that you ca say can and will be held against you. Right. And if the police weren't trying to arrest peaceful people, then more people would trust them and be willing to help them. So they dig their own hole. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Chuck Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream back pain cream at Walgreens. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. 
General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows you can't afford to wait so call 866-91-STEEL lock in your price now call 866-91-STEEL that's 866-917-8335 a meme is not easy to define what is it but you know it when you see it amazing don't tread on meme.com proves that i feel so enlightened don't tread on meme m-e-m-e helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value, and they look neat too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy to use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at DontTreadOnMeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't Tread on Meme, your path to a voluntary society with honest money. DontTreadOnMeme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition of the program, and you can take control toll-free at 855-450-FREE. With you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian here. And Mark. Toll-free number again, 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm, so feel free to reach out to us that way if you prefer. Phones are loaded up with you and your thoughts on police and the militarization of them and the, uh, the use of these militarized police in the government school. As we found out recently, uh, and again, this isn't the first time we've heard a story about this, but yet again, another one of these active shooter drills involving armed cops bursting into classrooms in Winter Haven, Florida. You're welcome to share your thoughts and uh, join us on our website as well at freetalklive.com. Mark, tell me how to get a free pound of some of the best coffee out there. And it's easy. You just go to coffee.freetalklive.com. There, you can sign up for a subscription with BuzzBox. It is a, it's a subscription you can cancel at any time. You can get your free pound of coffee and go. You pay for the shipping, and that's it. But um, what BuzzBox does is they send us back some money so that we can uh, send it to Kiva.org. And with your help, the proceeds go to give microloans to people around the world. And we've helped people in all kinds of different countries get all kinds of different things in order to make their lives better. In one case, it was a uh, guy was buying used appliances so he could fix them and sell them. Another one, his car broke down and he needed it to get it fixed so he could you know, do his taxi business. Another guy needed some cows, you know, that kind of thing. And these are the hands up that poor people around the world need in order to live a better life. Because human freedom is great and everything, but you have to be able to eat. So it's coffee.freetalklive.com. You likely drink coffee. 
every day. And now you can drink better, healthier coffee and help people in the process. All you have to do is go to coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, let's continue with you and your thoughts to the phones and the fun. We go first to David in Panama City. Uh, City, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, David. Yeah, hi, guys. Go ahead, uh, sir. Enjoy your show. I've been listening to it for a while now. Welcome. Everything. Go ahead with your thoughts tonight. Um, you know what? My whole family is either law enforcement or military. And, you know, I don't know where it is, other uh, law enforcement communities and areas in the United States, but here in this section of Bay County and all, um, you know, especially where I live in Lynn Haven, Lynn Haven has a good relationship with the citizens that it protects. Okay. And I think that, you know, we should be always on alert with law enforcement and such, but we should also, you know, you know, I don't, I don't know why, you know, it, cause not all cops are bad. There are good, there are bad cops because I, you know, my father was a cop, and he got he pulled up. My father was a Detroit police officer, and he ended up, you know, pulling up pulling somebody over in a, on a car vehicle stop. This was back in 1985, and it was just for, uh, uh, you know, for a uh, uh, license or a uh, tire or light out, and they were doing stuff that they shouldn't have been doing. Well, out comes his gun, and my father lost his life. Mm, yikes! You know, and since then. You know, you know, and I was I was corrections officer for like for many years, and such. And so I, you know, I see things from both sides of the both sides of the book. Yeah, I worked with a lot of corrections officers, and I I believe that I do see both sides of this. But I the the concern that I have is is that the incentives are messed up because yeah. uh, you know the. The fact is, is that you know as well as I do that if uh, you decided to put a beating on an inmate and then you said that he tripped up a flight of stairs, um, your word's going to be uh, believed before the inmates. Now, if he can get video or he can get enough witnesses or whatever, if there's well, enough I, preponderance I of an evidence against you, uh, you might yeah. get in trouble. You'll certainly, there'll be a review of some sort, but likely at the end of it, you'll be cool. Well, I, I mean, I was a member of the PBA, and they're supposed to protect law enforcement. Well, they didn't protect me, and I still have a lawsuit out there. I get a letter every 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 year saying that this this is still open and active. But you know, okay, go ahead, whatever. And um, but you know, as far as like down in Winter Haven and all, if if law enforcement's going to do these kind of drills and these kind of exercises, they need to give the community a heads up, and especially if it's going to be in a school and everything, they should. They should let the school district know what they're going to do because now you're going to have kids that are terrified of law enforcement, terrified of the police because they're going to come in in full gear and everything else, riot gear and everything. They're going to bust in and do – but, you know, on the other side of it, you know, 20 years ago, we didn't have the school shootings. We didn't have the – we didn't we – we, we thought, you know, we were going to be fighting Russia. Well, who are we fighting now? You know, so – it's it's I you know I really don't where where's the balance in all of this? Well, that's, that's you know, I, I, really, I can understand the frustration yeah, yeah. there, right? And I think that the, 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 the midpoint that was suggested earlier was that okay, if you're going to have to do this active shooter drill, then do it outside of school hours. Do it on the weekend. Do it at night. You know, right. do it sometime where the school's not going to be packed with students. You'd be terrorizing them uh, as much as at anyone. At the very else. least, use those blue guns, those blue trainer guns. Yeah, it's that still the, not okay. It's I, still not okay right, with I mean, me. I wouldn't want my kids going and having to be subjected to that, even if they were carrying paintball guns. It's still a scary uh, situation. So I think on that much we can agree. And David, you know, you once again brought up this idea that there are these good cops out there. Uh, it's hard to really believe believe that i know that they're probably is that it's probably true i think that a lot of cops try to do the best they can within the circumstances in which they're that they're working but ultimately if the good cops don't go after the bad cops then what good are they really and we had a guy who was a police trainer who called this show we actually met him in real life he came to the new hampshire liberty forum at least once and a dude named jeff and he had trained police for you know uh, decades and he had decided that he was going to end his career in training the police because he was so disgusted by the poor quality of the recruits that he was being sent. He told us that it was one out of ten who were maybe the right stuff. One out of ten of them had maybe you know what it really took that they were you know a good quality recruit, and the other nine out of ten were a bunch of people who wanted to be badge heavies. They wanted to you know get the power. Yeah, uh, that's 
see, that's the thing. That's the problem that gets in with a lot of these, you know, some law enforcement, they've got the little man syndrome, okay? They've got the badge. They've got the gun. They've got everything on their side. This guy said it was 9 out of 10 of the recruits, which is a pretty scary number, right? Like, that's that's pretty shocking. Well, like meet the Falkers. I mean, you got the little cop there, you know, and 10,000 volts is about to enter your body. You know, it's like, you know, you got that syndrome going on. David, thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate that you can acknowledge that's happening, and I appreciate your call. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Even if it was 1 out of 10, it doesn't take too many reactions like that to sour the public. And this is re- really mm-hmm. what, what it's coming down to is, is that a, an occupation police officer that had the benefit of the doubt for so long is losing the benefit of the doubt. And and that has to be very painful for the people who are there trying to do the best job that they can. Right. But the benefit of the doubt, sadly, is being uh, is, is diminishing. And there are ways, gentlemen, to stop this. You can do something about the bad cops um, in your midst. You can push for uh, badge cams or uh, wearable cameras and microphones that are available, That where the audio and video is going to be available to people readily. I think it should be streamed directly from the officer to the internet and that we, the people who employ the police, are supposed to, you know, we should be able to watch our employees. Um, I don't know. It might be interesting. Run some ads on the bottom. Maybe you can pay for the department. I have no idea. Brody is in New Jersey. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Brody. Hey, how are you? I, said, I, didn't, I don't understand something. What exactly is the object of these raids in the schools? I mean, what are they accomplishing? Well, the police would claim that it's... Out? The police would claim that it's to acclimate their officers to the situation of an active shooter on a school campus. That you know they got to practice if they want to be good at this. Um, and of course, my my claim is that it's to acclimate the students to being used to being around militarized police force constantly. That doesn't make sense. You can train cops in any type of environment. They can build tents and practice there. There's no need for them to do it in school during school hours. Let them do it after school hours. Just the motivation I'm not getting. Yeah, I got you, Brody. Thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, Toll-free number 855-450-FREE. Doug in Columbia, South Carolina. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Doug. Hey, guys. Hey, what's on your mind? Um, You know what really ticks me off is a police officer telling me that he's protecting my freedom. He's either ignorant or he's lying. Because, first of all, I didn't contract with them. It's an involuntary relationship. Mm -hmm. Second of all, my money is forcibly taken from me to pay for their salary. So anyone who says that they're protecting my freedom is way out of line. Great point. They will, in point of fact, if you decide you don't want to pay for their salary, they will come and probably put you in a cage. And if you put up any uh, resistance, they'll probably hurt you or kill you. Well, likely your um, salary is going. The the salary is paid from property taxes. So um, the the county will sell sell your home and then, or the city or whatever, sell your home and then use the police to extract you from that house. It certainly will. Doug, if you've got more to say, hang on. We can bring it back here coming up in hour number three as we continue with more Free Talk Live. We still have plenty of time for you with your calls and thoughts. You don't have to call about police abuse and militarization of the police and whether or not they should be trusted, etc. These are some of the topics we've discussed so far. You can bring up anything you want, although clearly a lot of people have a lot to say on this issue, and for good reason. 855-450-FREE is the number. More Free Talk Live coming up. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. When Karl Marx failed because the workers of the world did not unite, that was the end of communism? Not a chance. It went underground and attacked the culture, movies, the school system, the family unit, and Christian values. Cultural Marxism, featuring Ron Paul, Pat Buchanan, G. Edward Griffin, and Ted Bear, explains what happened. Get the DVD at moviepubs.net, worldnetdaily.com, or newswithviews.com. 
I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, November 14th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,163. Silver around $15.71, and Bitcoin around $396. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. The Liberty Beat is made possible by Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. In the news, the New York Times is reporting that President Obama next week plans to announce major changes to the immigration enforcement system. That means shielding up to 5 million undocumented immigrants from deportation while providing them with work permits. The paper, citing administration officials with direct knowledge of the plan, says a major change would allow parents of children who are legal residents to obtain legal work documents. CNN reports that President Obama is shifting U.S. policy on Syria as he now believes that ISIS will not be defeated without fighting them in Iraq and Syria, as well as removing President Bashar al-Assad. Senior U.S. government officials and diplomats tell CNN the president has asked his national security team to review the situation in Syria to determine if a change in policy is needed. There are other reports that the United States is being pressured by nations who are currently hosting Syrian refugees, including Turkey. A federal judge has refused to alter the force feeding being done to hunger striker Abu Diab by jailers at the Guantanamo Bay prison. Judge Gladys Kessler said the practice lacked compassion and common sense, yet still sided with the government on the practice. Judge Kessler said Diab's attorneys failed to prove he had his constitutional rights violated. His attorneys with Human Rights Group, Reprieve, will be appealing the decision. They called on the American public to demand to see the force feeding videotapes that the Obama administration has fought to keep private. The Liberty Beat, brought to you by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. They've created a menu of food that's so good, so easy to make, you'll find yourself eating it every day, even though it has a shelf life of up to 25 years. eFoods Direct is offering 10% off to all Liberty Beat listeners. Just go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for your savings today. Support also comes from The Corey Moore Show, live each Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern. Liberty-minded, comedy-focused. The Corey Moore Show at CoreyMooreShow.com. This is The Liberty Beat for Friday, November 14th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TheLibertyBeat. On Thursday night, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Torture spoke in Houston, Texas, about the mainstreaming of torture in the United States. Special Rapporteur Juan Mendez said there no longer exists a universal moral condemnation of torture. Liberty Beat reporter Derek Bros caught up with Mendez to find out why the United States is allowed to continue down this dangerous path. This has a long history here in the United States with tendencies towards isolationism or, or uh, what some people think uh, is a sort of U.S. exceptionalism, uh, which translates into uh, these rules are all okay, but they, uh, they apply to everybody else, not to us. Mendez called the use of torture a form of state terrorism. 
On Wednesday, thousands of nurses around the United States took part in protests and strikes in response to what they see as a lack of protections for health workers treating patients with Ebola. National Nurses United estimated around 100,000 would participate nationwide. On Tuesday, 19,000 nurses in California launched a two-day strike. The nurses want the hospitals to upgrade hazardous material suits and provide additional Ebola training. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your message or product? Well, the Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To inquire further, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, November 14th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Shortly after Seattle area consulting firm Brink and Tiller received a resume from Corey Wilhelm, a college graduate with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in communications, Human Resources Director Robert Bradshaw immediately fast-tracked Wilhelm's application and spoke with The Onion about this exceptional candidate. Well, the second I saw Corey's resume, I knew I had to send it straight up to our CEO. I mean, we're talking about an applicant who not only got into the University of Washington School of Communication, but also managed to graduate in four years with a Bachelor of Arts. This kid's only 22, but according to his resume, he already has experience in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. We're really going to have to move fast to get this guy. Bradshaw went on to say that company heads could barely believe the candidate had two years of experience working at his college newspaper and had even taken a full four years of high school Spanish. Since receiving the application, Bradshaw claims the company has made numerous attempts to reach Wilhelm. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. The police want it both ways, it seems. On one hand, they want uh, you to think of them as your buddy. You can trust them. They're there to protect you. And on the other hand, they storm into classrooms in Winter Haven, uh, one of the middle schools in Winter Haven, Florida recently. And this just didn't just happen in Winter Haven. It's happened in other places, in other states. Storming into classrooms with guns on an active shooter drill. Oh, the police say they're sorry. They don't, They promise they'll never use guns in the future. But that doesn't mean that they won't be doing these active shooter drills in the middle of the day in front of all of the students. So it's this juxtaposition, this kind of uh, this dual-edged uh, mission that they have that on one hand, they want to be your protector. But on the other hand, the ways they're going about it are awfully scary and intimidating. And they don't make people feel like they're very safe. What, you're welcome to share how you think at 855-450-FREE about this. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, we had a cop call in, somebody claiming to be a state trooper, called in in the last hour, accusing us of claiming all police are evil. I've never said that. I think that the police are trying to do good things in general, but I think that they ultimately end up doing evil because I think it's wrong to take someone who is not harming another human being and put that person in handcuffs and take their freedom away from them. I think that's an evil thing to do. Even if you're told that it's the right thing to do, even if you're told that, well, this is the system and the politicians have decreed that there's a war on drugs or a war on fill in the blank, you know, a war on prostitution, a war on whatever, gambling, because they do that too, right? They'll go in and they'll bust the VFW hall for uh, having a poker game. I mean, these guys. Well, there's the terrible story of the dentist. Uh, was it was, I think, a dentist. Uh, it was certainly a doctor in Virginia. They were running an office pool, um, football. Betting. That's right. And uh, they had him down on the ground handcuffed. And the police officer's hand finger slipped on the gun. They shot him in the head. Yeah, they sure did. For a football pool. 
Uh, so you can share your thoughts here, 855 453. It doesn't have to be about the police, though. You are welcome to bring up anything, though. Lots of people have comments here, so we're going to get right back into your calls here. Also, we've got Skype. The Skype username that you can connect to is lrn.fm. Just send a contact request first. We'll approve it, and that'll be easier for you to call from that point forward. We've got Doug uh, still with us here in South Carolina listening to WQXL in Columbia. Doug, uh, you didn't, I didn't give you, I don't think you had enough chance to really get your thoughts out. So can you uh, kind of recap? Where you, what you're calling about tonight? Well, I was saying, and thank you. Uh, I was saying that uh, first of all, the relationship with police is involuntary. I yes. did not contract with them, so it's an involuntary relationship, and they steal my money to pay for their salaries against my will. So, they're, anyone who says they're protecting my freedom by doing that job is ignorant or they're lying. And that's how I feel about it. I feel that they're glorified revenue agents. If if they're sitting beside the road hiding waiting for someone to do something Master told them not to do. They pounce out of uh, behind the tree, and they go running 70 miles an hour in a 35-mile-an-hour zone to catch that person who was doing 42 because they were driving unsafe. What does that make them? That just mm-hmm. really irritates me. And, and they're, they're, when they show up to a scene or they pull you over on the side of the road, they're looking for someone to charge with something so that they can make more revenue for the state. They're glorified revenue agents. Sure, there are some cops who actually do make a difference out there, and they might save a life once in a blue moon. But the whole fact is the job, the whole situation is based on involuntary servitude, slavery, if you will. And I just can't agree with that. And anyone who says, well, I'm just doing my job, the Nuremberg defense is a crock. If you really believed what you're doing is wrong, you wouldn't be doing it. That's no defense for you. Well, I'd say you nailed it, Doug. Thanks for your call tonight, man. I really appreciate it. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. And that's a great point. And I think it was a nice rebuttal that I didn't come up with when we had the officer, law enforcement officer on the line in the last hour. Was that, you know, he was acting like he's doing people a favor and a service and whatever. But, well, if you want to perform a service, then get into an agreement with people. How many people would agree to have somebody out there with a gun and a fast car chase after them for going five miles over some arbitrary number of speed limit. Um, How many people would, would consent to that? I do think that people want to have, uh, I think you've got, at this point, with the technology the way it is, that uh, there's that odd guy, right? Like you've seen him riding a motorcycle or in some fast car, and sometimes just a regular car, some beater, just weaving in and out of traffic, going whipping down the road like... Sometimes it's a cop. Well, indeed it is, sometimes. Um, and there's no way to stop that. No one watches the watchers. I'm, I'm with well, that. Well, the one state trooper who busted the cop who was speeding at 100-plus miles an hour down uh, the interstate in Florida, she got targeted by the cops. It, indeed it is. But for that guy, and, and I think that it's clear that having you know, the police the around is a deterrent to crime. So, you know, some people will not drive that way because there are the possibility is that they'll get pulled over. I mm-hmm. love seeing that person get pulled over. I'm happy with it. But, um, you know, all in all, I do think what we're talking about is revenue agents. I think that speed limits are set artificially low with the intention of uh, catching people. I think when you have a police officer looking to uh, bust speeders, obviously what you're doing is you're going to catch them one every thousand times they speed or something like that that's no deterrent to anything that's just uh that's just revenue generation if you want to catch people you need to catch them doing it on a regular basis that's why speed cameras are far more effective in slowing people down than police officers are but like you said police officers manage to bust people for drugs and there's the uh there's the union let's go to steve in richmond virginia you're on free talk live hey steve steve in richmond You are on the air, sir. Go ahead. Yes, sir. How are y'all doing this evening, Super. gentlemen? Thank you very much for listening to my call. Go for it. You're uh, on. I, listened, I was calling about the fact of these, uh, I wanted to say, follow the money when you have these uh, individual police departments uh, spot teaming or, or having these issues at these schools. In my local jurisdiction, it's like every two year period where the budget comes up for uh, discussion. And that's when in the fall of the year, usually September, we have a very similar thing where they have locked out of our local schools. And it seems to only follow when the budget is saying the sheriff's department may have a little bit too extra budget money laying around. And instead of cutting the budget, the sheriff's department has to show a um, force to prove that they're necessary. Mm. And I want to say that just people need to just follow where the money is going in the local jurisdictions. These SWAT teams and these uh, drills, 
And it's been every two years, the last uh, six years, though, that I've watched it. And that's what I found. It, it seems to follow without a, a question. And if there's a if there's a call for uh, extra money in the sheriff's budget that they haven't appro- they've appropriated, but they haven't spent. Oh, they've got to spend it. Because budget- if they don't spend it, they could lose it. And yes, also, sir. don't forget about the other money that comes in from the federal government. And thanks, Steve, for the call tonight. Yeah. Uh, look at these programs that have resulted in the Bearcat, ballistic engineered something, attack truck, whatever. It's a horrifying piece of equipment that uh, police departments all around the country, is departments as small as our very own Keene, New Hampshire, which is a town of 25,000 people, uh, have this Bearcat device. There's also the MRAP, some sort of mine-resistant armored personnel carrier. Those are usually overstocks, I think. Those are from, from the military, and they're not using them. I don't care. Them. It's still money for the or at least it's seen as money to the police department because they feel like, wow, we get this new thing, and we don't have to pay for it. And uh, with the Bearcat, it's a federal grant that comes in with like $300,000 that you know, they have to agree to allow the feds to use the Bearcat whenever the feds come to town. But otherwise, the department gets to use it for whatever purposes uh, that they might. I don't have a problem with the uh, Bearcat in a bulletproof vehicle for police officers if they need it. My problem is with the enforcement of victimless crimes. Because of the drug war, which we have seen an incredible ramp up in uh, police uh, presence. I mean, there's just a lot more police than there were before the drug war existed. Mm-hmm. There's, you know, as a percentage of the population, they're just a per- larger percentage now. It's been going up in a and lot of places. The, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the toys are fine. Um, the, you know, the bulletproof... If you're going to send somebody into a situation where bullets might be flying, a bulletproof vehicle might be really awesome. Now we have an added problem of the militarized police, the the kind of gung-ho thing, and it all started with the drug war. That's true. You want to stop that, paint the, these Bearcats uh, pink. And get them sponsored by uh, uh, Hello Kitty. I mean, you know, that kind of thing. And then you will see an entirely different attitude. Because, I mean, you know, you should, <laughs> these things should be like water wings. You, should, you, you wear them because you need them. Toll free number tonight is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You're invited here to take control of the airwaves and bring up whatever might happen to be on your mind. Do you trust the police these days? If so, why? It's Free Talk Live. We're coming up. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now. Because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-856-4195. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-856-4195. That's 1-800-856-4195. Call 1-800-856-4195. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm. This time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. 
six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want here toll free at 855-450 free. The police, a lot of people have opinions about them and you are welcome to share yours here tonight. What prompted the discussion was yet another one of these active shooter drills, this time happening in Winter Haven, Florida, at a middle school where students were terrorized and terrified by the police and how they behaved during this drill. Some say these drills can be done on the weekend, and why not? Why does it need to happen with the kids in the school? It seems to me that the reason why you'd want to do it while the kids are in the school is because you want them to be acclimated to seeing the police like this, to being around the police in the these sorts of activities, to have this be a regular occurrence. Yeah, so, and the, the police officers have called in tonight. None of them have defended this particular behavior. It's true. This is beyond the pale. But I bet you'll see more of it over time. As we continue here to take your calls at 855-450-FREE, that's the Pro XPN toll-free line. And if you care about your online privacy, you need to know about Pro XPN. What is it? It's a global virtual private network. They encrypt your online data, meaning that you're protected from your internet service provider snooping on you. They're probably recording all the websites you visit, the search terms that you enter. They may be logging that info for up to five years in some cases. But if you're using ProXPN, they can't log that information because you'll be encrypted. You can download their app for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, or Android devices. Plus, they're set up for Linux. It's just a little bit of a different setup process. Go to ProXPN.com FTL. And you can get started there for free. But when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account to get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, the ability to privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites, uh, you can do that and save big by using code FTL50. FTL like Free Talk Live. And then the number 50, as in 50% off the price of the annual account. That breaks the price down to around 5 bucks a month. And that locks in your savings for the lifetime of your account. You can save even more. If you've got some Bitcoin, you want to pay with Bitcoin, use code FTLBTC, and you'll save 62% off the price of the annual account there. So you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. And ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits at all. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. And again, use codes FTL50 or FTLBTC to get a great discount on privacy. That is priceless. That's ProXPN.com slash FTL. As we go back to the phones and to the fun, let's talk first to uh, let's see, Mark is in Panama City. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Mark. Hey, just glad to call in, and thank you for your show. But, I, you know, I'm not a cop or anything, but I tell you what, I sure would like one when somebody, some thug, drug thug or, or any kind of thug, is trying to hurt me 
I would definitely want one at my doorstep. And I believe they do provide a service. I don't believe they are out to uh, mug us or put us down or anything like that. Uh, yeah, there's 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 always a bad apple. Uh, well, but you know, I, I just. I really, I really think- okay, so I want to ad- address a few things here. First off, um, uh, you know, well, maybe you know, private security could be provided at some point, and you'd be, you know, like safe rather than having a government-funded uh, police force. But let's talk about um, the the mugging situation. Is is that police across the country have been doing a- using asset forfeiture and taking money from people who are traveling? Simply because they have too much money. Um, so, Like I mean, an old lady who's taken her life savings and is trying to go somewhere to buy a house or something like that. Even she if gets, it's not an old lady, it doesn't matter who it is. If they take their, you know, take if they have like tens of thousands of dollars on them, they must be a drug dealer. So the money gets taken from them. Um, and one more thing about the drug war. I think this is really important. You mentioned drug addicts. The fact that the drug war exists drives up the, artificially drives up the price of, of drugs, right? Like cocaine would be cheaper if it wasn't illegal. And and so that means that people who are addicted to this stuff, rather than working a nine to five and being able to pay for their habit, like, you know, good alcoholics and potheads and whoever else um, does with their uh, money, they now have to go out and commit crime. And so the drug war actually puts you in danger from the drug war, uh, druggies. Yeah, I think it puts me in danger. But at the same time, uh, I'm a recovering addict, been clean for 22 years. And I tell you what. The only person I ever harmed, well, I shouldn't say the only person I ever harmed, but I never robbed anybody, but I, I floated checks. Sure. Yeah. Well, I that's like, fraud. <laughs> you know, but, yeah, that's fraud, yeah. But the thing is, I paid the price for it, you know, but, you know, and well, yeah, what and if saved all the police my were... life, hold on, what saved my life was a DUI, and I had to ride a bicycle for six months here in the state of Florida. I, at the time, I was suspended for six months. I had to ride a bicycle for six months. Across a, a a bridge in Panama City it was called the Hathaway Bridge, and it was small. And I said, you know, this is ridiculous. Grow up. Well, I definitely understand you know, that uh, people have had experiences you know, and, with the with law enforcement that have led them to a better path in life. There's no doubt about that. Right. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to discount your story. But there are also a lot of people whose lives have been made worse by the fact that they had uh, an encounter with the police and they went to jail and they lost their job as a result. They lost their home. My life has been made worse by going to a grocery store and having a bad clerk. Okay, well, you can always go to a different grocery store. The thing with the police is you're always forced oh. to pay for the police, whether or not, as our last, as one of our more recent callers pointed out, it's an involuntary relationship. You're forced to pay oh. for their salaries, whether or not you think they do a good job. And look, Mark, I'm with you as far as like the police stopping bad, you know, criminals from actually hurting people. I don't have a problem when they uh, when they do that. As a matter of fact, I've assisted them in those investigations, but I don't think that they're helping anybody when they arrest peaceful people who have not harmed anyone else. Thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Let's continue here. We've got Ron. He's in Indiana. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Ron. Hello. Good evening. Um, it's really the first time I've ever heard your show. Welcome, and sir. I, thank you. Um, I have had some personal experiences with the police. I am a law-abiding citizen. Um, I happen to live in um, in a small town in a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio. We have a great respect for our police. Um, they are they are kind to people. We have a very low crime rate. And um, I took a job in um, West Lafayette, Indiana. And <clears throat> shortly after I was there, the police broke into my car. The police broke into the car and took my dog out. My dog was in the car. The windows were up. But it was a rainy day. It was like 67 degrees. It was cool. The windows had to be up. I took my dog with me so I could immediately leave work after I was done instead of driving home so I could go see my wife who had a heart attack. How long was the dog in the car? I had my, and my dog was in the car. How he long? was very comfortable. Um, it was a, I had gone out around 2 o'clock, and I had to leave at 6. He would have been at home for... Eight hours. Yeah, I think it depends and, on the dog whether it could handle that or not. Well, uh, it, it, he, actually, he, he is. Right now, I'm driving to go see somebody in Dayton. It's a three-and-a-half-hour trip. Right, he's, he's contained I in the water. car. 
I have I have water for him and food, and he has uh, his bed laid out. He, the seat is back down. It's a hatchback. He has a lot of room, and he's very comfortable. I love my dog. Okay. My dog is stupid. He's a bad dog, but he's my dog. I believe and you. Okay. Nobody has a right to hurt him, okay? Anyway, so they break into the car and take him out. I come out um, to our, to about two and a half hours after I last saw him. Now, I know he's not in any danger. I wouldn't leave him in a hot car, okay? Again, it's raining out. It's completely overcast. Ron, hang cool on. Day. I want to hear you wrap your story up. We're going to do that here in a moment. So more with Ron and your calls and thoughts. Welcome here at 855-450-FREE. What happened to his dog? It's Free Talk Live. For all our loyal listeners, it's time for another giveaway. Over the next 30 days, our friends at SupernaturalSilver.com are giving away six 16-ounce Supernatural Silver liquid valued at nearly $100 per bottle or their skin and body gel priced at $49.98. All you have to do is enter and win at GCNlive.com. Hurry, contest ends December 5th. GCN can give you and your loved ones a fighting chance with the Supernatural Silver giveaway at GCNlive.com. This winter, next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel can be safely stored with your other supplies for many years and works in any gas-powered vehicle or backup generator. With the bitterly cold temperatures predicted for this winter, now is the best time to stock up on spare fuel. So go to GetSpareFuel.com. That's GetSpareFuel.com. GetSpareFuel.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hard-working men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. But there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM.
It's Free Talk Live. You take control. Toll free here. 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Police and your opinions about them. That's what the show's essentially become. Uh, we did start talking about, uh, earlier tonight, start off by talking about the police in uh, West, not what, what, what am I thinking, West Haven, uh, Winter Haven, that's it. Winter Haven in Florida, The uh, one of the middle schools there was assaulted by the police in one of their raids. Oh no, they don't call it a raid, they call it a drill. It's a drill. They're drilling for uh, an active shooter on campus and they have to do it during school hours and and have guns. Well, now the police are saying, well, well, we won't have guns in the future because some people are upset. But to me, the upsetting part is that they're doing this at all, that uh, that they're doing this in front of students, putting on this show, busting into rooms uh, in a very intimidating and threatening manner. I know they're claiming they're there to protect the students, but it, it doesn't necessarily feel that way to the students. And we'll continue with you and your thoughts here. Our toll-free number is 855-453-FREE. You know, coming up on Monday... The Free State Project participants who are working diligently on putting out a new movie will hopefully be releasing their new film. It's called 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire. Their website is 101reasonsfilm.com. You'll want to go there and bookmark that and check back on Monday uh, or check out their Facebook page. It'll be announced there as well. But check back on Monday because that's when the movie is slated to come out. And I'm looking forward to it. It's uh, supposed to be at least an hour long in the trailer looks great. Yeah, it's going to go over the 101 reasons to move to New Hampshire if you love liberty. Yeah, so if you're like me and you're concerned with the police that are out of control, uh, maybe you want to see have you know have a police where their only job is to actually stop real criminals who've hurt people. <laughs> That's a sh- shocker of an idea. If you're on board with that, if you love the ideas of freedom all around, that you understand that in order to be free, you have to allow others to be free as well. You get that kind of stuff. You're the right person. Check out the Free State Project, and you would probably find this uh, this upcoming movie to be very interesting. So check it out, 101reasonsfilm.com. If you can't wait, uh, the Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree movie, which was the first movie made by Free State Project participants here in New Hampshire, that has been re-released, the director's cut version is now available to watch on youtube if you just search youtube for victimless just search for victimless and Derek j's movie is the first result so or just go to victimlesscrimespree.com and we'll go to you with your calls and thoughts ron is in indiana you were telling us a story ron uh, about some police in a town in which you don't live you were working uh you'd brought your dog to work in and you left him in the car uh, but you said it was for a relatively short period of time, just a few hours. It was a comfortable day. You know, it wasn't freezing cold or something like that. But the cops you discovered had broken into your car and did what? You still with us, Ron? Ron in Indiana. I yep. thought I heard him there. Um, oh, we do have you. I'm Go ahead, losing, sir. I'm losing you. Oh, no. Oh, I'll tell you what, Ron. I'll put you on hold, and then maybe you can get into a better cell where you've got better signal. Because I do want to hear the rest of the story. I mean, he was sounded like he was shocked by what the police did with his dog uh, in the car. So hopefully we'll be able to find that out here in a moment. And if uh, he'll have to call back, I guess he just dropped. Let's go to Christopher uh, in uh, India. Excuse me, in West Virginia. Christopher, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh, hey guys, how are you doing? Hey, good. Go ahead, sir. Um. I- I have a couple of points. One, uh, could you imagine what America would be like without any law enforcement whatsoever? What kind of chaos that would breed? Well, um, inter- that's interesting question. Like, like police forces didn't exist prior to about the 1850s. London had the first one. Prior to that, it was uh, sheriffs, and um, you know, a lot of their role had to do with uh, tax collection. Um, so, what you had were private security companies. You heard of Pinkerton men, right? But you also didn't have the type of armament that the average American citizen carries on them. Like, you don't have AR-15s, you don't have 9 millimeters, you don't have semi-automatics back then, you know, when they had the sheriffs that basically collected uh, debts and controlled who owned what pieces of land and stuff like that. Sure, but I mean, I did just point out that in U.S. history, there was uh, there were a lot more s- private security companies and a lot fewer, um, you know, law enforcement and, you know, the People, you know, went along fine. Things were okay. Yes, uh, private companies would have to have newer and better armaments today. Obviously, they wouldn't be carrying around single-action Colts. Uh, Well, I mean, I I understand that. I mean, your defense is uh, someone of better grade, better quality would step in and fill the void. 
No, I think that what actually what I'm, I'm claiming, what I would claim is is that uh, because of what they call qualified immunity, which is what law enforcement officers have, that you have a perverse incentive situation. So a private security company, when they take somebody into custody, becomes liable for that person, whereas a police officer doesn't. And, you know, they're, the, the, a private company is held responsible. Police departments are not. So what I'm concerned with is the legality of it. If everybody is responsible for their own actions from a legal standpoint, then you're going to have a much better situation. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, I understand that. And another thing I wanted to bring up is uh, the, uh, the, the the rehearsal, the drill that they had carried on down in, uh, I believe, Winter Haven, Florida. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, uh, I, I was uh, I was active duty Marine. I was, uh, you know, I was in the infantry. I, I'd done several things like this. And uh, one of the things I can say is when you do a live drill like that, you have the people, one, you want to do it for surprise. So that way that all the children, all the students are surprised. And behaving as a normal situation would be so that way cops and law enforcement can understand that, hey, there are other people there, they're innocent, and you want to avoid the innocence as much as possible. What better way to do that than do that at a surprise time? Then to use the students as your tool, that. right? You're just using them as a tool, a training tool. Well, what you're doing Who is cares about the traumatization? Who cares about what their feelings might be of having to experience a traumatizing situation like that? It's all for the benefit of law enforcement, right, Chris? Well, I mean, you got to weigh it against, I mean, yeah, of course there'll be trauma, of course, but some kids look up to police officers as heroes. Well, let's you know, give all the, let's give some class. kids PTSD so we can save them from a future possible gun shooter situation that may never happen. Let's just give some of them PTSD. Hey, I got to break a few eggs to make an omelet. Thanks for the call, Christopher. Let's continue here with Morgan in Indianapolis. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Morgan, listening to WIBC. How are we doing, guys? Good. You're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, we just reluctantly decided to uh, put my daughter in kindergarten, uh, mm -hmm. whereas we were homeschooling um, and planning to homeschool, but uh, got busy and uh, other responsibilities, and it absolutely terrifies me, um, not just because of my public schooling uh, results or experience, but uh, to think that these things go on as often and as prevalently as they do, and you know, we've heard from some people this evening that are upset about it or find it appalling. Uh, you know, there have been enough letters. The police insist that they'll not use guns. But where are the lawsuits? Where's the outrage? How you can't sue them. This? It, you can't sue okay. them. Hey, look, the cops do this. All The only thing that can change this is public outcry, and that has happened in Winter Haven. And now they're saying, well, we won't use guns. But you can't <laughs> sue them for terrorizing your children. They're, as Mark pointed out, immune from liability. Well, the department's not, but the officers certainly are. I guarantee That's you right. wouldn't be able to Plus sue you the won't department. Get as much, you won't get as much money out of the department anyway. It surely has some liability as well. You can school, sue the school corporation. They're allowing these things to happen. Yeah. yeah. Good luck. Yeah, I, absolutely. I think everybody should be uh, put up to, to be sued here. But when you're dealing with juries, oftentimes juries will, uh, th you know, they see a large multinational corporation. They see dollar signs in their eyes. They'll, they'll award a much larger um, uh, reward than they will if they see a municipality. Because the municipality re represents everybody. Well, well, no, the hell it doesn't, because everybody would not have considered it a good idea to send uh, police officers with live ammo into a school during the day to scare the heck out of the kids. Morgan, do we lose you? I think we might have. Thanks for the call, no. man. Appreciate it. Oops, darn it. <laughs> we have now. <laughs> well, we are getting short. The talk radio show. Talk. <laughs> we are getting short on time here, but we've got maybe enough time to fit you in. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. But don't worry if you didn't get a chance. If you don't get on tonight, we do a live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. And uh, tomorrow, I will be on that show for the very first time. I think I might have sat in on like an episode of the Sunday show, maybe on a third microphone briefly at some point in the past. But Surely you've appeared at some point. Yeah, I think so. But I'll actually be on as a host regularly from tomorrow on. So we'll come back with more of your calls here. Your thoughts on the police. That's what everyone wants to talk about. That's coming up next on Free Talk Live. More on the way. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. 
You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. On Facebook, on the news, and in conversations with friends, we're bombarded every day with advice on how to be healthier, from gluten-free and non-GMO diets to how much exercise and sleep the body needs. But how much have you heard about alkalizing the body? AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops are a holistic and natural way to get your body's pH levels back in balance. Just a few drops in water will help your body rid itself of harmful waste. And even the healthiest of diets can be complemented with your daily use of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops. Who isn't looking for more vibrance, vigor, and energy? Now buy two bottles of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops and get $10 off your order. Visit AlkaVision.com or call 800-518-7615. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops are packed with a powerful combination of the most alkaline minerals and compounds. Open the door to greater health, vitality, and zest for life. Alkalize your body, supercharge your health. Call 800-518-7615 or head to AlkaVision.com. If you're looking for work, or even if you're not, here's an innocent mistake you really want to avoid. Never return calls before listening to your voicemail. Your wireless phone sends calls you didn't answer into voicemail, and it shows you phone numbers for calls you missed. Important, don't call back callers you missed until you have first listened to your messages. Otherwise, you frustrate people who bothered to leave messages by asking them to repeat a message they just left as your voicemail greeting instructed them to. If you're a job applicant, this alone could be a deal killer. And even if you're not, there are few things you can convey to someone that are as fundamentally maddening as, I didn't hear you. With money and attention so scarce now. Effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips for job seekers and everyone else, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Moments remain if you're on the line right now. Maybe you'll get on. Uh, if you're not on the line, don't bother because we are loaded up with folks who want to comment on the state of the police. And do you trust him? Police are saying uh, one of the cops called in earlier says they're there to help you. They're here to protect you and keep you safe. Well, I wish I could believe that. Unfortunately, my freedom is under threat by the police. They're the ones who have taken away my freedoms. They're the ones who have taken me and put me into handcuffs. And I've never hurt anybody for civil disobedience, for, you know, acts with no victim. 
And they do it all the time to all kinds of people who, you know, come from all walks of life, but mostly poorer people because, you know, frankly, they're easier to pick on. They don't have attorneys. You know, a lot of people, especially if they're younger, they don't know their rights. I mean, well, there's this, a lot more poorer people, too. Yeah, this is a reality. And uh, you are welcome to share your thoughts here as we continue. Our website is freetalklive.com. Please join us there. And uh, don't forget, you can go there and get interactive. And if you like the show and you like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, then you can support the show by shopping with us at shop.freetalklive.com. You enter Amazon through the links you'll find there. There's Amazon US, there's Amazon Canada, Amazon UK. You just click into the right Amazon for you. And Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale when you start shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. We go right into your calls and thoughts. Fred's in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hello, Fred. Hello. Hey, go Fred. ahead. Okay. I just want to get off a little bit the topic, um, right? Hello? Go ahead. You're on the air. Oh. Yeah, right now, DuPont's crying because something happened when their plants blew up or something, and they're asking what happened, and, oh, well, you know, maybe this is karma for what they did to hemp. Oh, yeah, I heard something about a, a plant uh, accident of some sort. Yeah. I didn't read right. the, the news headlines about DuPont, and you're saying it's karma biting them in the butt because DuPont was one of the companies behind the banning of the hemp plant and cannabis as well. That's an interesting theory, Fred. Thanks for the call tonight. The people who died didn't have anything to do with it if they— Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, let's talk to—I don't know if anyone died, but uh, let's go to Mark listening in Panama City. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Mark. Hey guys, uh, listen. I just want to make one comment. Comment, and uh, I'm a first time caller, calling second time tonight. Welcome, uh, sir. But, Wait, you've uh, called. I you've just, called once more earlier tonight. Yeah. I'm sorry. We only just, allow one call per night, but you're welcome to call us back uh, tomorrow I'll night. I thank now. you for the call tonight. It's a, it's a it's a rule. It's a simple rule. We don't have a whole lot of rules here on Free Talk Live, but we want to give as many people a chance to get on the air as possible. Yeah, it's not. It's not trying to, yeah. you know, make I under- you feel better. Anyway. I understand that, you know, you come up with something else you wanted to say later on or somebody else calls in later. And Tomorrow you, at 7 p.m. Eastern. Right. You want to respond. We're here seven nights a week. Even if we're not on your local talk radio station all those seven nights, we still have an audience. You know, they, if you want to be heard, you can call any night you want. Uh, please do. Well, let's go to a different Mark. This one's in Delaware, Ohio. You're on Free Talk Live. Mark. Mark and Ian, hey guys, good to hear you. Long time hey. listener. Uh, the last time I called was when Lee Rockwell was in the studio. Oh wow, that's a long time ago. Uh, Go ahead, sir. Hey, just wanted to say uh, I was talking to your screener. Um, the thing that really gets to me is we talk a lot about you know when we discuss libertarianism and volunteerism, and one of the things that comes up with this is tragedy of the commons and how uh, when no when it, when everybody owns something, nobody owns it, takes care of it. Mm-hmm. But probably the worst example of tragedy of the commons is qualified immunity by police because they can do all the damage they want and they can be in front of their dash cam and yell Garrity or yell stop resisting as they're beating somebody who's not resisting in front of their car or they can come up to your car as they have done with me and try to build build the stop you know they look at my medicine bottle for my prescription as if I'm carrying some kind of illicit drugs and it's just my prescription bottle Hmm. and they're trying to add to whatever the stop is it's just you know just amazing. But it bothers me that the tra- tragedy of the commons, people do not understand that, and they think, well, gee, the police are wonderful. And, you know, the police officers themselves who call and try to say that, you know, they're doing the right thing, they know wh- very well what Garrity is, and they know what very well what police yell with stop resisting and why they do that. And when they don't arrest the officers who are next to them doing these violations, that means they're standing idly by in the heat of the moment and not being peace officers because they are not pulling their fellow policemen aside and they are not writing a police report and putting that police officer into internal affairs. You know why? They know what happens when they cross the thin blue line. Like I was talking about earlier, that cop in Florida, the state trooper who took down a cop for speeding, going 120 something miles an hour. 120? Regularly. Like, you know, he did it multiple times before. Because otherwise she would never have been able to caught him. She had to lay in wait. Right. And so, you know, she was targeted by the other officers out there across Florida. She had her own personal information pulled. She had cops creeping outside of her house, trying to intimidate her. And, you know, you cross that thin blue line, man. They come after you. Mark, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Let's go to Andy in Auburn, New York. You're on Free Talk Live, Andy. 
Hey, um, well, I've called in before. We have a pretty good department here in Auburn. I've called in to p before defending the police, but I have since uh, begun to follow Cop Block on Facebook, mm. and it is outrageous. It is appalling. There, there are ten stories a day. Yeah. There is video proof. Cops murdering people. Mm. Cops beating the crap out of helpless hobos. Cops beating up women, kicking women in the head while they're handcuffed. This is happening all the time, all across the country. And it's not every cop, but like the last caller said, where are the good? I mean, I heard a caller earlier say, oh, well, I think cops, some, some of us think cops are heroes. I'll believe one of these cops is a hero when he decides to arrest a fellow cop yeah. after he murders somebody or kicks a woman in the head or shoots a dog or leaves a dog on the side of the road. I mean, the stories are endless. Yeah, you're... Ten, ten stories a day of horrific, outrageous, appalling brutality and... If you think the cops are heroes, anybody listening to me, if you think the cops are heroes, you go look at Cop Block or you go look at the Free Thought Project. Yeah, good sites. And then you try to tell me that then after a week of research into those sites and the video proof, then you come and tell me yeah. cops are heroes. And then follow the stories, too. And good call tonight, Andy. Thank you. Follow the stories and watch what happens to these police who are accused of doing these things. And they're caught on video almost every time. It's the department. So, well, we conducted our investigation and officer so-and-so had completely acted by the book. Yeah, we've investigated so ourselves and we have found that we've done nothing wrong. Not only Is it that. fair to say the cop block was launched here on Free Talk Live? I don't know, but we've been around from the very beginning. Because the two block. creators of it uh, talked about it here on the air first before any other media. They've both been on the show as co-hosts, yes, and uh, Cop Block's a great site. Plus, all, another great site to check out, Photography is not a crime. Yeah, I think photographyisnotacrime.com. That's another shocker. Yeah, it, uh, because you're just talking about videoing the police and the amazing things that happen. Let's go to Ron. He's back. Uh, we, you know, no, Normally it's a one call per night rule, but if technical difficulties happen, as happened to you, Ron, we will let you back in. Uh, so, can you recap real quick here? Your dog was in the car. Uh, they, The cops broke into the car to get the dog out and that's where you kind of picked up or you left off the story can you i guess finish it off fairly quickly because we're sh very short on time sure i went to the police department to find out where my dog was and um how did you know it was the police how did you know he left he left a note it, it said <laughs> please tell me about your dog and a so, ransom uh, note because i would not have known yeah, because sure. they left all the doors open, mm. and um when I, nice. not only was the dog missing i couldn't find my computer so <laughs> i just kept saying um Where's my dog? I want my dog. I want my dog. And where's my computer? And they, they're saying, he didn't leave your car open. They didn't know that. Well, the, the, the person that was in charge that night, the sergeant, um, I said, I'll, I'll take a form also. I'm going to file a complaint. I got to go get my dog. And he comes out and he gives me this form after he made me wait 10 minutes. He knew I was in a hurry to get back mm -hmm. home. He said, um, he said, well, let's fill this out. I said, I'll take it with me and fill that out later. He stood in the lobby of the police department. Now, you know there's a video there, mm -hmm. okay? It probably won't become available. And he threatened me. He said, well, have you arrested for, for filing a fraudulent form? And he's screaming and yelling at me. And I just took the form and I said, now, where is my dog? And he wouldn't answer me. So I left. I called 911. I said, where's the pound? They, she said, it's hard to find, so come on over here to the sheriff's office, and we'll have one of the deputies take you we'll over We'll give you I some more great there. customer service. Ron, if there's more to the story, call another night, man. It sounds interesting, and I appreciate yeah. your time and the call tonight. If you didn't get in tonight, uh, accept our sincerest apologies, and call tomorrow, because we'll be here at 7 o'clock 7 p.m. Eastern Whether we're time. on your station or not, we're on every night, 7 to 10 Eastern. And here's a hint. It's always easier to get in toward the beginning of the show, especially on a busy Indeed. night like this. So uh, don't wait till the last hour uh, to call in. We'll see you tomorrow online. In the meantime, at freetalklive.com. Enjoy your weekend. Nothing.
Free Talk Live. To be free is to be clear-headed. I am. Uh, I, you know I, I do well encourage I people. Do. Somebody gets down and smokes a joint and gets high. They sit on the couch and they turn into a blob. Yeah, well, you, I, I don't need to know much about people that smoke pot, Christy. Right. Yeah, Christy. Um, I, I am you know, the, they procrastinate. That's what you guys were talking about the, on your show no, tonight. Cliche. About okay, legalizing then, Okay, it. then, Christy, then what I can say then is the people that don't smoke pot make sweeping generalizations because you just did. It seems like the vast majority of humans use some kind of substance throughout their day or week. Not Christy. She doesn't. Well, what she, a sad, sad state of Do you affair. have a cup of coffee we in the morning, Christy? To, and th- at this time in our, in our history, if that's... We've case, always done it. Christy, it's been I done mean, throughout you know. humans. People, well, how okay. many people do you but, know, Christy, that can't function without a cup of coffee? Well, you have to have a bread, you know, piece of bread to live, to survive. You're not talking coffee. about food. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, November 15th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.30 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,190 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $379. Antiwar.com reports Houthi gains in southern and central Yemen continue to mount the face of fierce resistance from Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, seizing another district in the Marib province. The fighting saw 35 fighters, including 25 Houthis, killed and a number of others wounded. The Houthis chased Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and its allies across the border into the Beda province. In addition to the fighters killed in the clashes, another 15 Sunni civilians were reportedly killed in Rada, where the Houthis were shelling areas still resisting their takeover. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula territory is shrinking with the Houthi advance, and with the Houthis backed by part of the Yemeni military, they seem likely to keep advancing deeper and further cementing their hold on power. In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit tour.fppradio.com. That's T-O-U-R dot F-P-P-Radio.com. Reuters reports the Republican-led U.S. House of Representatives approved the Keystone XL pipeline on Friday, but a similar measure struggled to get enough support in the Senate and President Barack Obama indicated he might use his veto if the bill gets through Congress. Approved by a vote of 252 to 161, the legislation circumvents the need for approval of TransCanada Corp's $8 billion project by the Obama administration, which has been considering it for more than six years. No Republican voted against the measure, while 31 Democrats voted for the measure. It was the ninth time the U.S. House has passed a Keystone bill, and supporters were confident that this time the Senate would follow suit and pass its version. But passage was not assured in the Senate, which is expected to take up the measure next Tuesday. Supporters were still one vote shy of the 60 needed to overcome a filibuster, a blocking procedure, an aide to a Keystone supporter said on Friday. The aide spoke on the condition 
condition of anonymity. Approval for the pipeline, which would help transport oil from Canada's oil sands to the U.S. Gulf Coast Energy Hub, has rested with the Obama administration because it crosses an international border. The decision has been pending amid jousting between proponents of the pipeline who say it would create thousands of construction jobs and environmentalists who say it would increase carbon emissions linked to climate change. If the measure did pass Congress, Obama would have to decide whether to make rare use of his veto power. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 UPI reports protesters say they plan a peaceful shutdown of the business district in Clayton, Missouri after the release of a grand jury decision in the shooting of Michael Brown. Brown, an unarmed 18-year-old, was killed by Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson. The grand jury is meeting in Clayton, the seat of St. Louis County. At a meeting Thursday night in St. Louis, organizers said they want to hold the Clayton protest on the first business day after the grand jury makes its decision. They identified other protests hotspots, including the Ferguson police station. Wilson has not yet been charged with Brown's killing. His supporters say he fired in self-defense after Brown attacked him. The shooting in August set off a series of demonstrations that sometimes turned violent. Police responded with arrest and tear gas. At Thursday's meeting, organizers emphasized the goal of non-violence. Michael McPherson, co-chairman of the Don't Shoot Coalition, said, One of the reasons we're here is to have fun and build community. We're in a struggle that takes a long time to make things happen. In order for it to be a movement, we have to stay in it. McPherson said the group expects hundreds if not thousands of people to join the demonstrations. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. In this week's Onion Tips section, five easy ways to adapt your deplorable and parasitic existence for the upcoming Armageddon. Tip one, focus on preparing your home for any number of disaster situations, which still probably won't take your mind off of your impending death or the myriad mistakes you made in your short, pitiful life. Tip two, make sure your linens are clean prior to the upcoming catastrophe, as these are likely the very same sheets on which you will soon be slowly asphyxiated. Tip three, take some time off work and spend your last days free from the bonds of the oppressive machine that was just about the only thing giving you a purpose to your otherwise insignificant days. Tip four, spend your final waking minutes before the end of the world with your family, knowing full well you'd rather be doing a number of other gratifying yet completely depraved things. Right, sicko? In other news, a smitten foot fetishist thinks these may be the two. A woman and her gay best friend go on another one of their little adventures, and a dead daughter would have wanted a $220 million liability settlement. This is the Onion News Network. It's time for Off the Air Live. And here's your host, Cody O'Connor. Hey, let's 